It's Tiger football time! <laughs> It's Tiger football time! <laughs> Your football time. <laughs> it's the two thousand.
Okay, one, two, one, two, uh, one, two, one, two. Huh? It should be good to go now. Okay. Okay, well, let's see here. Let me see if you can hear my, uh, commercial here. Can you hear the commercials there, too? Oh, okay. Tell me when you're on the screen. There's a new place where all the hipsters are hanging out. It's called the movie theater. I can hear that. Okay, did you hear any of that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Change off. Hey, check one, two, three. Check one, two. Okay, and here is, here is mine. Okay, I'm hearing him. Okay, so if I call Jim back, he should be able to hear me, right? If I call Jim back, then, sh then we should have no problem. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate your help. All right, bye-bye. Are we running late? No. Not really. We're all right. Yeah, it's me. Is Steve doing the news? Oh, okay. All right, then you should be able to go back in and hear me. Uh, I think we've got it working. Yo, you're already there. Okay. Uh, Shane, go ahead and uh, talk. Hey, Jim, check one, check one, two. There's a new place where all the hipsters are hanging out. It's called the movie theater. Okay, and then I am coming in after that. You should be hearing us. Okay. It says mute. Fine now, okay. Well, I I had some problems here that I couldn't get um, I couldn't get my volumes up. Dan had to fix something. I think what happened is when I moved my laptop, I pulled my cord out that uh, brings it from the laptop into the mixing board, and so I plugged it back in. I had to hit line in, and once I did that, uh, Dan was able to log in and hit the setting, and got we got it fixed. Oh, okay. No, you're hearing me then. You're, you're hearing me not only over my cell phone, but also over my headset. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Then I'll give you a holler back. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right. Bye-bye. Get a haircut. Hey. Here's a man, yeah. the man that plays the good music at football games. I like Love it. it. I like it. Do we have a, Do you have an extra one of these, by chance? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I need to. I'll hog one for, and then he'll need one. Thank you, sir. Yeah.
football time. It's the 2019 edition of your Waynesville Tigers. Our game being brought to you by Air Serve Heating and Air, Andy's Pizza, Lowe's Chevrolet, Waynesville St. Robert Airport, Sacalera's Ford, Clayton Holmes, the Bank of Crocker, Columbia College, Phelps Health, Shelter Insurance Agents, Mike Anthony in Waynesville and Dave Holland in Richland, Memorial Chapels, Odyssey Scuba, Buffalo Wild Wings, the Pepsi Cola Bottling Company, St. Robert Glass, and B&B Theaters. Let's get you to the press box in our pregame show first, and then Tiger football. And a good evening. It is week number four of the 2019 football season. The Waynesville Tigers are at Springfield Hillcrest down at Shoemate Stadium. Good evening. I'm Marv Luton along with my partner Shane McPherson. And the Tigers come in here at 1-2. and two. The Hillcrest Hornets uh, are 0-3, uh, Shane. And Hillcrest looking for a victory here tonight against the Waynesville Tigers. And the Tigers, on the other hand, are looking to, uh, shall we say, avenge <laughs> last week's I would uh, say so, debacle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's all it was. I mean, the Lebanon Yellow Jackets, hands down, are a very good football team. The first three weeks of the season, we have played the number two team in the state in Class 4, the number seven team in the state in Class 4, and we have also played a Class 6 team, which is the one we won, we've won. Right. You know, so, I mean, the Waynesville Tigers, the first three weeks of the season, it has been kind of brutal on the Tigers. Well, you know, we, we talked about that throughout the weeks here, that the first, you know, the top three teams that are ranked anyway are, are in the top ten in our state. I mean, that's it's, it's pretty significant about that. Tonight is a chance for the Tigers to absolutely get a little revenge and avenge that loss from last year. They kind of gave away towards the end, too. And I got to tell you, um, I, I'm feeling really good about tonight. It just seems like, uh, you know, uh, our dauber's not down. We're ready to go, ready to play football. It's an absolutely gorgeous night to play down here, so let's go. You have had the chance to uh, visit with some of the coaches, uh, some of those you used to coach with and some you used to teach with. Um, what are the Tigers going to do tonight? You know what? I think I'm, – I, I'm thinking I might see a reversal last week. You know how Lebanon just took the year out of it and tried to control everything? I'm thinking that we'll probably run the ball a little bit more and try to feature, you know, Sheen. And, and we've got two other good, real good other backs in Eric Richardson and, and the Bradford – the freshman, the Bradford boy. And I just think that we're going to feature a running game. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, Joe will mix it up. And I would love to see a couple of play actions if we get into our running game pretty good. But if we can get started, I think it's important that either team that gets started well might have a really good chance tonight. So I'm hoping it's the Tigers. Well, I go back and look at the last year's or last week's stats. Right. We didn't have a whole lot of plays. No, we Our did not. Our defense was on the field way too long. Well, we had less than 200 total for the game. In fact, it was probably less than about 150 total, I think. But, you know, it just they, – they had a defense that could stop us, and we had a – uh, our defense was on the field way, way, way too much last week. Lebanon Yellow Jackets again, uh, one of the top tier teams in the, not only the Ozark Conference, right. but um, I think, you know, before everything is said and done, uh, you know, everybody looked at uh, one of the premier games in the Ozark Conference was Camdenton against West Plains a couple of weeks ago. And it was. And, and it was a great game, there's yeah. no doubt. Uh, the uh, Lakers won it in overtime on a field goal. Right. I think the Highway 5 rivalry between Lebanon and Camdenton is going to be just a knockdown drive. That is going to be run against pass. Yeah, oh, it's going to be it's going to be a big time game. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of them, you know, that Camdenton station starts to televise a little bit or something like that, who knows? Or maybe they'll even develop a station that'll televise out on a game <laughs> yeah, like well, that. Somebody, well, they've got their own plane, right, you know, yeah, so and, they might as well have their own television and station. And West Plains, you know, they they still got another big game. You know, they, they lost to to, uh, to Camerton last week, but they've got another big game coming up in a couple of weeks against Lebanon. That'll be a big game. You know, we've got some games tonight that are kind of, well, I don't I don't know if you – our game is a big game in this conference. Uh, you and I decided that we're going to really keep a really big eye on, on Rolla and Parkview tonight. Um, Kickapoo goes to West Plains. I don't see very good things happen for Kickapoo tonight. I don't either. Lebanon's at Glendale. Well, kind of same thing. And Camden goes to Springfield Central. So, uh, Well, yeah, the Lakers should just pound Springfield Central. And 
I don't know um, what Glendale's got, but their defense better be good to stop the Lebanon Yellow oh, Jackets. Man. That's all I've got to say. That, Like you said, it's not going to be good for Kickapoo probably tonight against West Plains. And uh, Like you said, rather visiting Parkview. That's that, that could be a pretty good one. This could be a pretty good yeah. one. This, I think, is going to be a game with Waynesville and Hillcrest. These are two teams that mirror each other. Right, and, you know, that's the thing. There are number... You know, they're considering us and Rollin that three or that four spot right now in the conference. And this is really the battle tonight between, you know, the Parkview, Rolla, us and Hillcrest tonight to see how everybody's gonna fare against everybody else for the year. So those two games, the Rolla Parkview game and our game here, are good measuring sticks for the rest of the conference tonight. Our pregame is being brought to you by B and B Theaters along with Buffalo Wild Wings, St. Robert Glass. And the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company will hear this, and we'll be right back. There's a new place where all the hipsters are hanging out. It's called the Movie Theater. Mmm, smell that? That's popcorn. After you've purchased your ticket, make your way to the air-conditioned theater. Take a seat, relax, and get ready for the feature presentation. While the urge to go to the movies hasn't changed since the dawn of motion pictures, the experience has. B&B &B Theaters is giving away movie tickets and popcorn every single week. Simply subscribe to the B&B &B Theaters channel on YouTube to stay up on the latest in upcoming releases and movie trivia enjoy the magic of the movies only at bnb &B theaters at buffalo wild wings of st roberts the perfect time to try a sauce or seasoning that's always piqued your curiosity stimulate your taste buds with caribbean jerk teriyaki or salt and vinegar it's a great time to try something new at buffalo wild wings old route 66 st robert so put your phone on pipe down mode and come to b-dubs where the screens are huge and the fans are you your hands will be so filled with wings and beers, you'd be hard-pressed to hold one of those nerdy pocket TVs. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! We're back, Marv Luton, along with Shane McPherson as we get ready for the hillcrest Waynesville football game here. And we're taking a look at the districts. Last week, we were on top uh, of the uh, districts with Glendale at number two, Parkview three, and Springfield uh, Central at number four after uh, our loss to uh, Lebanon. Uh, Glendale gets Lebanon tonight, so uh, Glendale went to two and one. We went to right, one and two, right. but we're only four points behind Glendale for the uh, top spot in our district. So that's not too bad a win here. And if Lebanon takes Glendale, we jump right back up to the top spot right. uh, in the district standings. Yeah, we sure will. You know, with a win here tonight, we could really jump up and, and kind of have a, probably a double-digit lead in that standing if everything would go in our favor tonight. But I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. How would you like to be in the Class 4, District 5 bracket? Lebanon, Halias, Camden, Washington, all four are undefeated at 3-0. Uh, Rolla, Union, Marshfield, and Pacific come in with the bottom four. Uh, Rolla and Union are both 2-1. and one. Marshfield is 1-2 and in Pacific. Uh, they are 0-3, and, and they are in the cellar. Uh, Lebanon leads at uh, by three points over Halias by uh, about six points over Camdenton and about 15 points over Washington. But again, Washington, Camdenton, Helias, and Lebanon, all of them are undefeated. Uh, Washington gets Fort Zumwalt East tonight, who are 0-3, while Camdenton, as we mentioned, takes on Springfield Central. Helias plays Cardinal Ritter oh, wow. out of the St. Louis area. Cardinal Ritter is 3-0 and on the season, so that's going to be a tough one for the Crusaders, while uh, Lebanon, again, goes up against Glendale. And then the uh, other Class 4 district that involves the Ozark Conference teams is the uh, Class uh, 4 District 6 bracket that has Webb City at 2-1. and one. They're number 1. Bolivar at number 2. Right. Uh, West Plains is number 3 at 2-1, and one, followed by Willard, Carl Junction, Neosho, Hillcrest at 0-3. They are at number 7 in their standings in McDonald County. Uh, they come in at number eight. They are one and two right. on the season. And then the other uh, Ozark Conference school, that is uh, Kickapoo. They are one and two on the season. And again, they're in that class six, district three bracket. And I think there's only like four bracket or four districts in the entire class six uh, population right, there of is. schools. So. Right. Well, the thing about the 4A this year, every once in a while you get, you know, 6A is always big time, you know, and it always has a lot of good athletes. But I'm telling you what, the 4A in our state this year is absolutely stacked. I mean, they are just loaded. We've got, of course, three of the teams that we play in our conference in there too. But, I mean, that is just going to be a really fun thing to watch towards the end of the year. A very small marching band here at Hillcrest. I'm not sure that's the varsity band. That, that kind of looks like maybe it's the middle school band. I'm not uh, really sure, Mark. Look at how young those kids look. Well, look how old we look, too. Okay, so. we won't go there, but they're about <laughs> ready to play the national anthem. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. And there is a need for glass repair. 
There's only one name you need to remember. St. Robert Glass. Serving the area since 1963, St. Robert Glass repairs mirrors, screens, windows, glass doors, shower doors, and so much more. St. Robert Glass. Quality work from a team that you can trust, specializing in both residential and commercial glass needs. That's St. Robert Glass. Be of W Memorial Drive in St. Robert open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or you can call 336-4122. I'm Nate. And I'm Kate. And we're not just literal taste buds. We're, we're best, best buds. buds. And we love Pepsi. Pepsi. Sure, we live inside your mouth. But that doesn't mean we don't enjoy the finer things. Pepsi incoming! what I was thinking. It's like we share the same mouth, Kate. Forever and ever, Nate. Make your taste buds happy and pick up a delicious, refreshing Pepsi. At Clayton Homes of Lebanon, with a variety of manufactured homes right on the lot, and right now, see the Delight Home, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, starting at $31,995 after incentives, and that price includes delivery, setup, and air conditioning. Now that is a deal. While helping you get into this new home, Clayton Homes of Lebanon will offer you several options in lenders. Clayton Homes of Lebanon, exit 130 off I-44, or visit ClaytonLebanon.com. Ah, I'm here in the middle of the beautiful Ozarks. I'm in one of the most exciting phases of my life. But it's definitely time to relocate to a place of my own. Somewhere I can power nap in peace. Where I can have my buddies over any time I want. Somewhere close to where I need to be when I need to be there. I wonder what my housing options are. Alport Beatty Communities offers move-in ready two, three, and four bedroom homes in both single family and townhome style. Styles. Located in Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, our residents enjoy a secure and comfortable hometown environment with the convenience of 24-hour maintenance, lawn care services, and community events. For more information, call Balfour Beatty today at 573-329-1013. We're back. Marv Luton, Shane McPherson, the Waynesville Tigers, the Hillcrest Hornets coming up here in just a moment. Waynesville coming out of the locker room right now, and the Hillcrest Hornets are poised on top of their steps to come charging on the field as soon as the Waynesville Tigers make their way over to their sidelines. Pretty decent crowd here for Hillcrest tonight. Uh, the Waynesville crowd, they may still be uh, I think filtering they'll get here. In. They'll get here. You know, they usually, it's, it's you know, people get off, what, 4, 4.30? Yeah, you know, I've been I've been really happy with the crowds we've had at Waynesville so oh, far man. this year, and we'll be there next week. By the way, uh, with the Springfield Central Bulldogs coming right. in, the Tigers put a whooping yes, on them last year, and we plan on doing that again next week. Yes. But uh, first things first, and that's to get by these Hillcrest Hornets. They are going to run the football. I think we are going to run the football. I think so. That's what Coach Joe Haynes uh, told me uh, today that he he plans on running the football. And we're going to we're going to probably utilize at least uh, three of our backs, including uh, the freshman Evander Bradford, mm -hmm. along with Eric Richardson, and uh, the premier back for the Waynesville Tigers, Shane Butler Lawson. But the bottom line is, you have to have the offensive line blocking in front to get your your basically to get free and find a few holes. Yeah, well, we're gonna we've got to get better at, at steps and hands on and stuff like that, and progressively every week you will. And this is one of those weeks where we've got a good chance to get some hands on some people, open up some pay, uh, some space for Sheen and Eric and and uh, Vander. And I, I got to tell you, those are three pretty dangerous backs that we have. So all they really need is some space, and they can really do some damage. But the bottom line is getting them the space, and that is something I know that the Tigers have been working on. We were manhandled and just – uh, pretty much roughed up last yeah. week against the Lebanon Yellow. They Jackets. pretty much had their way with us a lot, but they were, you know, they were stronger. We knew we were going to be a little bit small on the line this year, and it was really evident last week because that was a big, strong line. I mean, that's you know, Lebanon's always big, but that was a big, strong line they had, and uh, they really, they really showed up. So, is this going to be the uh, which offensive line yeah. does the best job tonight? Wins yeah. the game. I think so. I think that's the key. Is is our offensive line has got? We've got to keep our defense off the field tonight. I mean, we've been going for uh, two and three quarters, and and the Kickapoo game was a total reverse of that. And we need to have more of that kind of flow that we had in that uh, Kickapoo game in week two. 
And let's hope that happens tonight for the Waynesville Tigers. While well, well, Hillcrest gets ready to take the field, we'll take another break here from some of our fine sponsors. We have the kickoff coming up. Finally, in the Fort Wood area, St. Louis-style pizza, the flavor you love at a price you can afford. At Andy's Pizza, 690 Missouri Avenue in St. Robert, enjoy Andy's all-you-can-eat buffet daily from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., or every Monday you can buy one pizza and get another pizza free. Enjoy specialty pizzas or build your own pizza with a large range of popular toppings. Lots of salads, lunch specials, and appetizers, too, such as toasted ravioli, wings, mozzarella sticks, sandwiches, and more. Dine in, carry out, or have it delivered in St. Robert, Waynesville, or Fort Wood. Why drive over 100 miles to St. Louis? St. Louis-style pizzas are here now at Andy's Pizza in St. Robert. At Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge in St. Robert, we're here to serve you with outstanding sales and service. Whatever your preference, Chrysler Jeep Dodge, along with access to Ford and Chevrolet, all under one roof. At Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge, you'll also find the area's largest stock of used vehicles with over 300 to choose from, all clearly marked on windshields and online. See for yourself with a visit to Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge, 909 Missouri Avenue, St. Robert, or online at Lindsay Dodge Chrysler. We're back, Marv Luton, Shane McPherson, as the captains have made their way to the 50-yard line. Taylor, or Alex Taylor, along with Gunnar Brooks, Anthony Rose, and Jaden Kirsting. For the Hillcrest Hornets and for the Waynesville Tigers, I see Kevin Point set out there. I see Shane Butler Lawson. I did not see, I think that's Michael Lewis, and I'm not sure who the other one is that's standing on the other side is of it, the referee. That could be Saul DeHart. I think it's that, uh, our boy Josh Ash. Josh Ash, okay, number four? Yeah. Okay, that's who it is. I couldn't see if that was a number four or a number five. The referee, now he gets out of the way. Yes, that is Josh Ash. So those are our captains, our coin toss brought to you by Security Banks of Pulaski County. Toss your coins in Security Bank and watch your money grow now. Over the course of the years, we've talked right. about this the last couple of weeks, the team that wins the toss, the coin toss, has um, pretty much put their offense on the field first. Right. I think that, you know, I, I would think that they would probably take the ball, whoever wins it tonight. I, I would guess that. But, you know, I would think that when you're trying to find your offenses like both these teams are, it might be a good idea to put the offense on the field first. Coach Joe Haynes out there along with Justin Gerald, the head coach of the Hillcrest Hornets. The Hornets in their gray shirts, their gray trousers, along with the blue trim and the white numbers. The Waynesville Tigers in their orange trousers, their white shirts, and their black numbers as we get ready for this football game tonight. We've got a little bit of a wind blowing. Like you said earlier, this is a really nice, nice night. Oh, yeah. When we, get, when we left the station, it was about 86. And we went through that little rainstorm and the fire in the island in there. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was fire on I-44. But anyway, it got, it was, as soon as we hit that rainstorm, we got past it. It went to 75 right away, and it's just been steadily just getting nicer. And the wind is blowing, so there's a little breeze here as well. Okay, the coin toss is up in the air. The referee has caught it, and he is talking to the Hillcrest Hornets. So that usually means uh, the team that he talks to is a team that has uh, won the coin toss, and they pat him on they the defer. shoulders. They divert. So <laughs> make a liar out of us. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, well, so next week we'll go back to, well, they'll probably defer, and then they'll take it. Yeah, so, so the Waynesville Tigers will get the football first here as we get ready for week number four's kickoff. We're coming back with it in a moment. OZQ 102.3 FM, Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff seven days a week. If you're within the sound of my voice, many moons ago meant you were as close as right next door. We've been through some changes. These days, the sound of one's voice could be across the globe. And while you may not be close, the options we have of doing business right next door is amazing. Take banking, for instance. In 1911, the doors of the Bank of Crocker swung open for the first time. 108 years later, there's four Bank of Crocker locations in Crocker, Waynesville, St. Robert, and Richland. But you could be anywhere in the world and still do your banking as if you were at one of their convenient drive-up facilities. The Bank of Crocker has kept up with the new way we do business, but you can still do it with a handshake and a smile from your locally owned Bank of Crocker. Old-fashioned values with modern-day services. Member FDIC. They're serving up breakfast, lunch, and dinner at JCK's Down Home Cooking. They're new in the former Jitters location next to the Mary's County Bank in St. Robert. From early birds 
specials at $3.99 to other breakfast specials, including a kid's menu to lunch favorites that start at 1030 in the morning, featuring burgers, patty melts, salad selections, and more. Then there's the dinner entrees with steak, chicken fried steak, pork chops, chicken, and more. Enjoy their daily specials, too, like chicken and dumplings on Sunday for only $3.99. Find JCK's Down Home Cooking on Facebook, then head for the front door. It's open Tuesdays through Sundays at 6 in the morning, closed on Mondays. On the Mother Road, Historic Route 66 St. Robert, next to the Mary's County Bank. Remember Granny's house on a Sunday afternoon? It's back with JCK's Down Home Cooking. Back for the Waynesville Tigers to receive the kick is going to be Daniel McCullough along with Eric Richardson. By looking at the referee's signal uh, after the coin toss, he motioned that Hillcrest has deferred. Waynesville would get the ball, but then he signaled that Hillcrest was going to receive the ball. I'm going, what is going on here? So, well, it's a good thing, too, because yeah. we'd had to kick the ball off twice. That would have been good. Yeah. Uh -oh. And here's Look a out. little pooch kick, and this is going to go to Saul DeHart at the 45-yard line. They did not kick it deep, so the Waynesville Tigers will put the ball in play and have half of a field to work with. That's good news. Yeah, it was, and that was a good kick, too. We just got under it pretty well, and I'm sure he's going to instruct the special teams coach will instruct them to start fair catching that if they keep doing that. Yeah, because Saul DeHart caught that thing at the 45-yard uh, line, and he went backwards. He was tackled immediately, but it's going to be first and 10 for Waynesville at the 45, and Michael Lewis comes out to quarterback this team. Sheen Butler Lawson will be the lone setback in the backfield to start the day off. Okay, we've got some new looks on the line this week. Uh, some new numbers coming in there. We're in a 3-4, or they're in a 4-3. And here is a Lewis, hands off to Butler Lawson, who gets to the outside, breaks a couple of tackles, uh -oh. and he's loose down the sideline. Shane Butler Lawson, he'll pick up about 14 yards, maybe, ooh, let's see. How about 18 on the play? As he little, let's see where he stepped out of bounds. No, they gave him 13, Marv. Okay, 13 yards on the play, so a first and 10 for the Tigers on the first play. They had Butler Lawson behind in the backfield. Oh, yeah, they but did. But he broke loose. But those legs, you know, you always tell your running backs to keep their legs moving, and Sheen did that very, very well, and he broke it and got a good gain out of it. So first and 10 with the ball now at the 45-yard line, actually the 36-yard line of the Hillcrest Hornets. And again, yeah, a penalty us. flag on the play, and Butler Lawson goes off right tackle around the end, and he's dropped. A gain of about three, but this one's coming back. We had, yeah, our, our guy in motion came towards the line too quickly, and that'll be a flag every time. See what the Eagle indication shift. is from the referee, a shift. Let's have the, okay, five-yard penalty for the Waynesville Tigers. That will back them up. And that will bring up, uh, the, since that was at the line of scrimmage, that will bring up a first and 15. Right. Well, Joe staying true to form so far. I mean, we're only second play, third play in the game now. It's been off tackle both times. We are showing a tight end this week. Actually, a double tight. Gavin Kaava. Is the center still this week for the Waynesville Tigers? He snaps it to Lewis. Lewis pitches back to Butler Lawson and on the sweep to the outside. Lawson will hit the 35 yard line and scamper out of bounds, actually get knocked out of bounds, but he's going to pick up about five on the play. That's going to bring up a second down now. Actually, wow. he'll pick up 10 on the play. Yeah. Uh, it's going to bring, well, now they're going to spot it there, say they're only going to give him nine. I think nine. So second and six now for the Waynesville Tigers. Referees were walking around two different uh, places on the yard marker. Getting a good spot. We're four down territory, though. Ball on the 33. Here is the handoff. Oh, there's Eric. Again, Ooh. up the middle is Eric Richardson and nowhere to go on that one. Yep. Uh, they good. plugged it on that A gap that time. That's a gap right next to the center and the guard. And he went through there, and that linebacker was waiting right there for him. Good plug that time by Anthony Rose and Jaden Kirsting of the Hillcrest Hornets. They gave him one. So brings up a third down now and five for the Tigers again. They are in four down territory already in this contest at the Hillcrest 32-yard line. Lewis out of the pistol formation. He'll keep it. He'll run to the outside. Oh, Gets nice one move. good block. Oh, man, he got popped. He threw that thing, and he got stuck. Yes, Pass he did. goes incomplete. Trying to see who came over and made the pop on that uh, on 
Well, left Lewis, hander rolling to his was, right like that. <laughs> Boy, he exposed those ribs, and he, he definitely took a shot at him. That was one of the captains, Gunnar Brooks. That linebacker came up, and he laid a lick on Michael sure Lewis. Okay, now we're back to an open set. It's fourth and five. We are in four-down territory here. Tigers will bring Eric Richardson and Shane Butler Lawson in the backfield. In motion for the Waynesville Tigers is Andrews. Here's there a handoff to Butler Lawson up the middle. He's got the first down still on his feet inside the 20 all the way down to the 18-yard line. Another first down for the Waynesville Tigers again. Right off of left tackle and right up the gut that time for Shane Butler Lawson. Yeah, gain of 14 on that one. Shane seems to be finding the hole and all like we said you don't have to give him much room and and the offensive line is is getting him some room right now it's making a big difference again it is first and 10 for the tigers ball at the 18 yard line of hillcrest here's a handoff to uh, richardson there's two linebackers in the backfield already and they are going to wrap up eric richardson nowhere to go on that one the first one through was austin mahan uh, actually, he's an offensive lineman, and he was the first one to grab uh, the running back, Eric Richardson, maybe a half a yard on the play, and that's going to be about it. Yeah, but, you know, there's one good positive thing on that. He got stuck right away, but he's a yard, so we are getting some push by our offensive line. It's not in the backfield like it was last week. We're getting some push up front. Getting ready for the snap, and here it is. Lewis fakes the handoff, and uh, he is going to be there. dropped. Where was the offensive line on that one? There well, were four Hillcrest Hornets in the backfield, unless that was a broken play on the Tigers. Michael Lewis looked like he wanted to hand off to Butler Lawson. He pulled it back, and there were four Hornets right in his face. Well, actually, that was L.J. Bean, and he made the wrong read on that one, and he should have given it to Sheen. He was trying to keep it because he saw that defense flowing that way, but it didn't work out that way. Bean is back after the loss on the play. Third and about 12. Bean back to throw. Fires down into the flat. Pass is caught. That time pass is complete to Jalen Andrews. He gets knocked out of bounds right around the, uh, looks like maybe the 11-yard line. Right. So it's going to bring up, uh, again, probably a fourth and short now for the Tigers. I would think so. Did they Actually, give him about 10 on that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, but they it, sure did. He's about, yeah, yeah, we were looking at third and 13. Now it's about fourth and, well, actually, I think it's fourth and four. I'm with you. But again, the uh, Tigers come out. Michael Lewis comes back out at the quarterback position. Shane Butler Lawson is the lone setback off to his right. Here's a little jet sweep to the outside. He's got the, He's got the side. He's got the edge. Into the 10, into touchdown. the end zone. Touchdown for the Waynesville Tigers. And that is A.J. Martin. Martin goes in from the, actually, the 13. They had it at the 11. Uh, but I think that was the 13-yard line. I got to agree with you. Where Martin went in. So, A.J. Martin on the jet sweep goes into the end zone for the Waynesville Tigers. And the Tigers are on the scoreboard with 8-19 left to go here in the opening quarter. That's the way you start with your first drive right there. That's a nice, see us put six points on the board right away. Got to be a big confidence booster for the Tigers. Aaron Choi in to boot the extra point, and this one is up, and it is splitting the uprights. It is good. Tigers on the board, 7-0, and this week they are into the pocket of Seller Sexton. Last week they didn't get into their wallet at all. Seller Sexton donates $25 to the athletic department for every touchdown the Tigers score. We're on the board, 7-0. Waynesville on top. We're coming back with the kickoff. What is it, boy? Your house is on fire? Oh, you mean your AC is out? And your owners won't call AirServe? So why don't you call? Oh, right. I'm the only one who understands dogs. Too hot in your home for you and the dog? Call AirServe today at 855-259-2280 and start breathing easy tomorrow. That's 855-259-2280. AirServe heating and air in Waynesville, just a phone call away. We're back, 7-0, Waynesville on top after taking the ball 55 yards on the opening drive and sticking it in the end zone. After the pooch kick, the Waynesville Tigers got the ball at the 45-yard line, their own 45, and went into the end zone on a 13-yard sweep, a jet sweep by A.J. Martin, and the Tigers strike first. Good deal, real good deal. Now I want to see Aaron get off and get one in the end zone here. Needs to start doing that. 
He's capable. He certainly is, and he lets this one fly, and will it make the end zone? Uh, it will. Yes, It'll it get into the end zone. Oh, Back deep was the Hillcrest Hornets deep man. Uh, I don't have a number or a name by uh, number 37. Uh, we have a number 39 there, uh, Purcell Caden. I have no 37. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, that was um, – they just, they do not have, oh, maybe oh, that's that was 32. Yeah, 32. That's, that, that's Hurd. Okay, that's Tyrell Hurd. Okay, so they. He watched that go over his head and bounce into the end zone. So it's first and 10 now on the 20-yard line. They are in an empty set. Hurd lines up in the slot. The quarterback on the keeper, that is Mike Floyd. He'll roll to the outside and he'll get rolled. Is that Mike Floyd? No, nope, they went, that was Gunner Brooks on the uh, Wildcat. Right. So Gunner Brooks lined up. Uh, I thought that was Brooks, the quarterback, and Brooks uh, looks like Gunner Brooks is lined up as the Wildcat again. Mike Floyd is the normal quarterback for this team, but they are going with the Wildcat formation here against the Waynesville Tigers. The ball is loose, and the Waynesville Tigers are going to grab it. Can they get it? Yeah, they are kicking this ball all over the place. Finally Stupid into the, score! Finally into the end. Who got that? That was Eric Richardson was who got that. Eric, Eric Richardson, he, he struggled to get it, but he got it. <laughs> yeah, they ball, that ball got stripped at the 20-yard uh, line, and that ball just kept bouncing, and we've got penalty flags on the play. They're going to wave it off, and it is a touchdown for the Tigers on a fumble recovery by Eric Richardson. That looked like Rocky trying to chase the chicken in the back <laughs> coop there. I'm <laughs> telling you. Dumped, he yeah. couldn't get a hold on that, and they said, just follow it, follow it, and he did. Yeah. Waynesville coaches were, yeah, scoop and score it. And he, fired, he heard him because he scooped it. So Eric Richardson on a fumble recovery goes into the end zone with 7.46 left to go. So the first play from scrimmage, or the second play from scrimmage for Hillcrest, the Waynesville Tigers score. Aaron Choi boots the good. ball up to the upright. It is good. And Waynesville on top, 14 to zip. And this one is just underway. And we're already on the board twice. That's 50 bucks. From Seller Sexton, and we're going to keep it right here for a moment. That was a crazy play. The the uh, Wildcat um, actually, uh, what the quarterback or the Wildcat formation Gunner Brooks uh, did was try to hand that ball right. off to Dalton McIntyre, who was coming across in front of him right. on a reverse. Right. Uh, the ball got loose, and I don't know whether it was a bad exchange or whether we caused that. Uh, but nonetheless, the ball bounced a couple of times. They tried to get it. We tried to get it. Eric Richardson finally kept. Scooping it up, dropping it, scooping it up, dropping it, and by the time he finally fell on it, he was into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! Right. I think it was a combination of both. I don't think it was the greatest exchange, but when the exchange was made, we were right there and we were trying to get it out of there, which we did. So <laughs> you got to like it for a sophomore like Eric Richardson to get a scoop and score. So deep now for Hillcrest is going to be <laughs> Eric White and Tyrell Hurd. Hurd will be lining up at the five yard line. He will be deep. And again, Aaron Choi will try and put it into the end zone. 14 to zip. Tigers on top. 7.46 left to go here in the opening quarter. And the ball comes off the tee. I didn't think the wind would. Well, I guess it has got a pretty yeah, look good at the, breeze. Look yeah. at that flag over there. Uh, one of the Tiger flags. It is stretched out. The yeah. American flag uh, behind the uh, goal post is stretched out. So, got a pretty decent breeze out here. Not much up here in the press box. Not though. so much. No, sir. Here is Choi booting it away, and he gets his foot into this one. Hurd will be able to feel this at the one-yard uh -oh. line. He dropped it. He picks it up at the five, and here come the Tigers. They grab him and drop him at the 12-yard line. Now about a seven-yard return that time for the Hillcrest Hornets. Uh, several in there on the play that time for the Tigers, and I think getting up off the uh, bottom of the pile for Waynesville looks like that is uh, Marion Fiamme. Yep. He was the first one down there and the first one to put a pop on Hurd. Well, let's see what we're going to do now. Do we still have... Okay, now we have Hurd in the backfield. We don't have a quarterback in the backfield. Well, that, That's a wildcat. Okay, that is Alex Taylor, who is a, a wide receiver. He is lined up as the quarterback, and he will hand off to Hurd. Hurd goes up the middle. The Tigers stick him again, and maybe two on the play, maybe one. I now that's number three. That's Alex Taylor. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Running. Yeah, he's a wideout uh, listed in the book as a wideout. Uh, again, he is at the quarterback position. We have yet to see number 10 make his appearance on the field. He is right. a sophomore quarterback. I don't see him on the sidelines. Huh. He may be lined up as a wideout. As uh, Coach Gerald has made some changes. Again, 
Alex Taylor, and the, the ball oh, is up in the game. air. And I think I think Hillcrest fell on it. That was a high snap. It bounced off the helmet of the uh, quarterback. It fell down on the ground, but uh, one of the offensive linemen down there for Hillcrest able to jump on it, so they just wasted it down on that one. No gain on the play. Right. Brings up a third and ten ball still at the 12-yard line. Third and ten. Tigers. Throw down. Yeah, Tigers are showing blitz on this one. I would be too. Got to bring it at them. And they're trying to push the cadence, jump the Tigers offside. Back to throw is Taylor. Throws this to the oh. outside. Ball is dropped. Intended for Jackson, uh, Deion Jackson. But the ball hit him right in the numbers, and it came out. We have got a penalty on the play, on the play, and it is back at the five-yard line, and it is an indication it's a Waynesville penalty. That is normally a place where they call a hold. Well. But I think they march this one off against the Waynesville Tigers, and let's see what the indication is. It's a 15-yarder. That's going to be probably be roughing the quarterback. Because it was right where the quarterback threw a, a yep, personal a foul. Yep. That's Personal foul, rough on the quarterback. So, 15-yarder for the Tigers. Well, we don't need to have many of those tonight. And that is a first down for Hillcrest, their first of this football game. That brings the ball all the way out to the 28-yard line. First and 10 for the Hornets. Here is a handoff. And, again, this goes to her going to the outside. He's got a little running room. Gets to the 35-yard line, 36-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds by about three Tigers. Eric Richardson on the play for Waynesville as well as Ian Williams. But he gains seven on the play. That'll bring the ball out to the 36-yard line. Second and three now for the Hornets. Tigers with a four-man front. And two backs for the Hill Hillcrest. Well, no, one back. And they've still got uh, Alex Taylor at the quarterback. Yeah, that's Hurd in the backfield, in the deep part of the backfield. And he will get the handoff up the middle. He goes. Tigers read it well, and they are all over the place. Yep, that was a good defensive stand right there. He lost one. He lost a yard on the play. Brings up a second down now and about four. Uh, make it third and four now for the Hillcrest Hornets. Oh, the ball oh. came loose. The ball came loose. I did not see that. The referee just indicated it is a Waynesville Tiger football. It must have came off just as he went to the ground. And there was a scrum there on the bottom, and looks like we came up with it. So Wait. it will be it will be a Tiger football again, the second fumble of the game. They cashed in on the first one as Eric Richardson went in from the 11-yard line. Uh, as he Well, actually, he just kind of scooped it all the way right. to the 11-yard line and then fell on it in the end zone. That's correct. So it's first and 10 for the Waynesville Tigers ball at the Hillcrest 34. Here is Shane Butler Lawson, handoff off of right tackle. Wow. Uh, he just carried a couple of Hornets with him. He picks up four, uh, about four yards on the play, and that was all Butler Lawson on it that one. Was and you know he he got he got tackled or he got wrapped at the line of scrimmage, and then he's so powerful he carried two of them for three yards. That was a pretty good carry by Mr. Butler Lawson. Didn't have much of an opportunity to do that last week against no, the Jackets. He did. Of course, this is not the Jackets we are playing here tonight. Oh, Lewis on the key. quarterback keeper. He rolls to the outside. A great block. And that might, let's see, Saul DeHart came up with a great block. And I don't see a penalty flag. I could see that being a block in the back. But uh, did not get the yellow flag first down for the Waynesville Tigers. Ball inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Yeah, that was a good keep. He read that well. That defensive end came down, so he kept it. And he got the edge and got a good 14-yard gain. We're at the 18-yard line in the red zone. First and 10 for the Tigers up on top, 14 to nothing already in this contest. We have 4.52 still left to go in the opening quarter. Tigers have cashed in on one fumble recovery, trying to do it again. And here's Butler Oh, Lawson what a cut. Following the outside touchdown. What a cut. Shane Butler Lawson in from the 18-yard line. That's just, you don't teach that. He saw that. That was just a great cut. He got it on the sweep out there, had two lead blockers. They kicked it out. He kicked up in, ran right up the lane. Touchdown, Tigers. Great run by Shane. So for the second time on a turnover, the Tigers have cashed in. And for the third time, Aaron Choi will be trying to put this thing through the upright. His leg's going to be tired here in the first quarter. Uh, he could use the work. He's already kicked off several times, and he's put a couple uh, in the end zone. And this one through the upright, it is good. It's 21 to zip. Waynesville Tigers on top. 150 bucks to the athletic department from Seller Sexton. Kickoff coming up. 
He offers associate and bachelor degree programs at their Fort Wood Campus Center. Additional degree programs are available entirely online. Courses can be completed in eight-week sessions rather than the traditional 16-week semester. Sessions start five times a year, giving you multiple entry points. Park also offers additional graduate and certificate programs online. Military and civilians are welcome. Application fees are waived for military personnel. Park accepts VA benefits, tuition assistance, financial aid, and payment plans are available. Park University, a regionally accredited nonprofit university. Save time, save money, accelerate your education. 329-2798 or go online, park.edu slash go Leonard Wood. Between your first job and your second. When your old intern becomes your new boss. On the fifth anniversary of your last promotion. That's the moment you need Columbia College, where you can earn a degree for about half the cost of many schools. Register today at Columbia College in the Townville Plaza in Waynesville or at Truman Education Center on 400 Wood. The first class is free for military spouses. Learn more at ccis.edu. We are back 21 to nothing. The Waynesville Tigers on top of the Hillcrest Hornets. The Tigers cashing in on two fumbles by Hillcrest. And the Tigers marching the ball 55 yards down the field on the opening drive on an A.J. Martin 13-yard touchdown scamper. Yeah, A.J. got the edge on that one and, and just got the crease. And just like on that last run by Sheen, you know, it was pretty much the same thing. They're running the corner. They're looking for the scene. They get the scene. Good blocking outside. Good things happening for the Tigers right now. You bet. And Butler Lawson able to shoot the gap and go into the end zone untouched. That and Choi busts this thing and goes back into the end zone. So another touchback for the Waynesville Tiger kicker who has come into his own this year. Yep, he's really showing that strong leg. We always knew it was there, but he's got it this year. Well, you know, I think it, it took some practice. I think maybe Choi in his early going might have been a little gun shy. You know, it didn't have didn't have the power in the leg, but over the last couple of years, and he showed improvement last year. This year, he is just outstanding. Yes, he's very, very good with his foot, for sure. So the Hillcrest Hornets come oh, back out, and I think we've got uh, a different quarterback again. I think this is uh, Gunnar Brooks. Nope, this is... 17. Okay. That would be Gunnar Brooks. That is Brooks. Gunnar Brooks, who will be a quarterbacking, and the uh, slot back is Deion Jackson for the Hillcrest Hornets. So Brooks waits for the snap. Here yep. it comes. He'll run to the outside. Oh. Okay. Tigers missed him in the backfield. And no, he is going to pick tackles. up. He's going to pick up a couple of yards on the play. And I think missing him in the backfield uh, was the freshman, Jashawn Mabry Lyles. He came in so fast, Shane. Yes. He just really didn't have a chance to wrap him up. And when you come in fast and the guy steps out of your way, you've really got to uh, start grasp him. He needs a year of wrestling. We, to go along yeah. with that. <laughs> we missed three tackles there. We gotta we gotta clean that up though. Gain of about two on the play. We'll call it three, second down and seven for the Hornets in motion. And penalty flags fly because we're gonna have a motion penalty on the Hillcrest Hornets. Well, I think there was two on the line of scrimmage, or did we jump? It, 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 the only way we jumped is if we lined up offsides. And we must have. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. So five-yard penalty for the Tigers. That will make it second down now and about three for now. Make it second and two now for the Hillcrest Hornets. We're just giving them first down. Yeah, we can't do that. We don't want to let them have any whiff of any kind of success tonight. So again, in the backfield, that is Gunnar Brooks working out of the Wildcat formation. And he will keep it. He'll cut Good up close. the middle, and they're going to wrap him up. He'll get the first well, down. We got ball is loose again. The ball is loose again. Does the do the Tigers have it? They say they do. Let's see what the referee says. Oh, they called it down. Okay, they called it down. There's nope. It's still Hillcrest ball. So that will be a first down for the Hillcrest Hornets. But that ball did come loose because one way till Tiger did. had the ball, and he showed it to the referee. But they called the ball down. So. Right. Again, a break for Hillcrest. Yes, two of them. First and ten, ball at the 31-yard line. Okay, we're playing some tight man, so that means we're probably sending some people. A.J. Martin is down here on our side. He is definitely a cover corner. He's right up in his face. So the Tigers are showing blitz again, a four-man four front. 
And here they come. Coming to the outside is Brooks, and he is going to be chased down, and he is going to be dropped. Not bad. Good play that time by the Waynesville Tigers. That's Josh Ash coming up out of his D-back position. Gain of only about, uh, well, actually, I guess they gave him four on that. He got to the outside. Well, we heard all about this Mike Floyd from these Hillcrest guys before that this was a guy who was going to play. I can't even find him on the sideline. No, I don't even see. I do not see 10 uh, on the sideline unless uh, they've changed jerseys. And that may be him in the backfield. Are I'm you not trying real to say sure. coaches do that? Uh, I'm yeah. telling you. Alex Taylor again is the uh, quarterback now for the Hillcrest Hornets. He keeps there it. He's going to be chased and thrown down Good back read. at the 20-yard line. And that, again, Deron. is Deron Anderson. Huge loss on the play. That is going to be, what, maybe about a 10-yard loss? I think yeah. we're looking at second and six, and now it is going to be third down and about 16. Make it third and 15. Right. Big loss of the play uh, from Deron Anderson, who came up again from his linebacker position on the blitz, and he just grabbed that uh, running back, or grabbed the Wildcat quarterback and tossed him down. Okay. Alex, Alex Taylor again at the quarterback position. He'll hand off to Hurd. Hurd cuts up the middle, and okay. he is going to be met by five Waynesville Tigers who are going to bring him down. Hurd does, Hurd does not want to go down. and that's, that's the thing. That will get kids hurt. Yes, it will. If, you, if you're a referee out there and you see that forward progress stop, you have got to blow the whistle. In high school, for sure. Yes, you have to blow the whistle. This may be the same crew that uh, refereed the Waynesville-Glendale game. Uh, a couple of years ago because they did not <laughs> blow the whistle. Uh, and we had the coach ejected. We had a player or two ejected. And there were kids that uh, could have very easily got hurt. Yeah. It's fourth down and 12 now and a punting situation for the Hornets. And they boot this thing a nice punt high up into the air. Fair catch called for by the Tigers. Josh Ash has it at the 44-yard uh, line. Throws the ball over to the referee and hits him in the... Hip. <laughs> hip. Let's say the hip. So Sounds like Yachty got hit me hip today. Yeah. Yachty, Yachty <laughs> okay. or Molina. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in a very, um, yeah, a very <laughs> the front part of the hip. The hip. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten for the Waynesville Tigers. Cardinals won, by the way, in case you are just tuning in and didn't hear that over on 97.9 FM. Uh, or see it on the tube. Cardinals beat the Cubs. So, again, two in a row at Wrigley Field. That, tell is, you what, that is huge. That doesn't happen. No, that is huge. I mean, the, the ninth inning the last two nights has just been – I don't have any nails left. It's just been crazy. <laughs> so the Cardinals, again, can do no worse than come out of there with a split right now. We've got a penalty flag way back at the 28-yard line, and the referees are trying to – uh, figure this out. Waynesville will have the ball. Or will we have the football? Well, I mean. I did. <laughs> okay, it is going to be roughing the punter. Roughing the kicker. That is going to be a 15-yard penalty. I think Waynesville keeps the ball, but they're going to march the Tigers all I, the way back to the 28-yard line. I don't understand that one. I don't either, because if you're roughing the punter... It's taken... They should have had a first down. Yeah. They should have had a first down, and it should have been 15 yards from where the line of scrimmage was, not to where the ball was. Either that or it was a personal foul. It could have been. Well, it looked like uh, the referee said roughing the kicker. I thought he did, too. Of course, it could have been a personal foul roughing the kicker, and it could have been after the kick was made. So, to the, my, my thing is here... Uh, since Hillcrest plays the same bunch of guys uh, both ways, because they don't have a lot of players down no, there they don't. on the field. Okay, uh, the Waynesville Tigers do have their offense out there on the field, so it will be Waynesville Tiger football, but the ball will be all the way back at the Waynesville 28-yard line. So that was going to be around the uh, 45, but they marched it off uh, 15 yards back. So it's going to be first and 10 for Waynesville. Still on top, 21 to nothing, 121 left to go here in the opening quarter. Michael Lewis is the quarterback, and we've got movement on the line. Did Hillcrest cross first, or did uh, we jump? Uh, I believe that one's going to be on us. That's Antonio Pearson, number 72, and they will march it off five yards against the Waynesville Tigers. That is 45 yards in penalties. That is five penalties already in this first quarter for the Waynesville Tigers, and I can guarantee you they are not going to like practice on Monday. No, no. 
penalties will the hurt last you. the last two weeks the Tigers have been really good in penalties. Yep. After the Camdenton game, the Tigers were really bad in penalties, and uh, the coaches uh, made sure that they understood. Penalties don't help. So it is going to be a first and uh, about uh, 15 from the 23. Here is Lewis. He'll the give pitch. the pitch to Richardson to the outside. He gets it to the 30 to the 32-yard line, and he is met uh, by, wow, number 81. Who comes up with that? That is Bill Anderson for the Hillcrest Hornets. Bill Anderson took a shot from Eric Richardson as he was coming around the edge. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to bulldog a guy. That, that those running backs will run right over you, and that's what Eric did. Eric's a big, strong sophomore. So first and 15. Now it's second down. Now in about six. So a gain of 11 uh, on the player. Make it nine on the play for Richardson. Here is Lewis on the quarterback keeper. Pitches to Shane Butler. Lawson to the outside. Look out. Lawson cuts Look it out. loose. He's to the sidelines, and he is going out of bounds at the 45-yard line of the Hillcrest Hornets. And took out one of his other players <laughs> over on the sideline that was just a yeah. little slow in getting out of the way. We have a hurt player, a Hillcrest Hornet, that is down on the field, and he is down at around the 35-yard line. And unfortunately holding his knee. So that is the fourth first down of this football game. 21 points on the board already for the Waynesville Tigers. We will hear from another one of our fine sponsors. We'll take a break, and we'll be right Mailbox back. Mailbox of St. Robert is the go-to resource for packing, shipping, printing, and business service needs. Their team of dedicated, professionally trained experts understands the meaning of superstar customer care. They focus on saving you time and money by ensuring you get the right products and services at the right price. They can pack and ship almost anything to almost anywhere in the world. But shipping is only one way they can help make your life easier. They are also St. Robert's premier copy, print, and document service center. Large or small, black and white or color. It can be printed. Mailbox it can handle it. Mailbox it. One stop shop for dozens of business products and services that will allow you to do what you're good at while they take care of the other stuff you need to succeed. Dr. Shane and Tabitha Ogle are chiropractors serving Waynesville and the surrounding areas. They and the rest of the team at Ogle Chiropractic are committed to providing chiropractic solutions to address your unique needs. Whether you're experiencing back pain, neck pain, headaches, or even muscular tightness and tension, you may be searching for pain relief after an accident, experiencing an injury, or if you suffer from a specific condition like chronic back pain or a spinal condition. Even if you're looking to improve your overall health, health, Ogle Chiropractic can help you attain your everyday wellness goals. To schedule an appointment, call 573-774-4177. That's 774-4177. Well, the good news is Caden Purcell, the injured Hillcrest Hornet, is walking off the field by himself, limping just a little bit. I would imagine we'll probably see him back in the game. I would think so. Looks like just maybe he got one of those, what they call a tweak, you know, a stinger. When it hurts real bad at first, it starts to go away there in a minute. First and 10 for the Waynesville Tigers. The ball in Hillcrest territory at the Hillcrest 46-yard line. Waynesville on top, 21 to nothing. 37 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Michael Lewis on a quarterback keeper. He will lunge uh, past the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up two on the play. Fake the handoff to Shane Butler Lawson and then cut it up the middle. Yeah, I think that's going to throw them off a little bit. I know that they're really keying on Sheen. I mean, just, well, all, all four teams now have been keying and spying on him. Tonight, these guys can't stay with him very well, and we're getting some blocks put out there. Evander Bradford is in the backfield now for the Waynesville Tigers, the talented freshman. He will probably get the snap. He does. He'll get the toss back, and he cuts freshman. it off the. Uh, he cuts it off of right tackle. He should have kept going to the yep. outside. He cut that right back up the middle. Shane, uh, Shane, and yep. everybody was in front of him. If he'd have kept that thing to the outside, he might have. He might have found a little daylight. Right, and you know the thing about it is with him, he's going to get better every single game, every single down that he's out in the varsity field. He's going to see it, and I guarantee you, the coaches this week. You know, on whenever they review film of the team on Monday or something like that, they're going to say, see, well, you had the right idea. That was the right way to go. You should have just kept going that way, and you'd have been gone. And you're exactly right to say it that way. 
End of the first, it's 21 to nothing. The Tigers on top. Second quarter coming up. Attention, are you looking for a great place to work with new salaries and new bonuses and to be appreciated for compassionate care? Piney Ridge Behavioral, a treatment health center for adolescents, is hiring people with passion. Openings for youth care workers, RNs, LPNs, and licensed therapists with new sign-on bonuses. Applicants must be 21 and have a high school diploma or equivalent education. Contact Abby at 573-774-4034 for more information. Walk-in applications are accepted or apply online at Indeed.com. At St. Robert Family Dental, Drs. Jesse Smith, Bryce Brown, and Paul Riddle do all phases of family dentistry. They work hard to make your visit enjoyable, and they deliver excellent dental care to you and your family. They have 24-hour emergency contact and accept TRICARE and most other dental insurance. St. Robert Family Dental Center, located at 441 Marshall Drive in St. Robert. Uh, and here's a pass to the outside. It is. It, it was caught by Jalen Andrews and then dropped. And, yeah, okay, he picked the ball back up, and I think Jalen might have thought, okay, just in case they call that a uh, backwards okay. pass, a lateral, he picked it up just for assurance, but it was a drop forward pass, so it goes incomplete on the pass by Michael Lewis. A little flare pass to the outside. Okay, so we've got fourth and about five and a half from our 40 going in, from their 40 going in, and we're going to go for it. Well... You don't want to give Hillcrest great field position if you don't make this, but the way the Tigers have been able to manhandle Hillcrest, uh, you give it a whirl. Here is Butler Lawson well, up the middle. He's got some room. Out. He's picked up the first Look out. Ball. He's See ya. gone. See ya. He is at the 20, at the 10, wow. in the end zone. He broke tackle after tackle, got into the secondary, and he was gone from the 44, was that the 44-yard line? 41-yard yeah, line. 41-yard line. So 41-yard run by Butler Lawson has put the Tigers on the board yet again. Yeah, that's not bad. Seven carries for 117 yards so far for Sheen. Doing a nice – boy, he just – doesn't he – his vision is just unbelievable. Yeah, and it? I mean, you know, the thing of it is, when he can get a little bit of blocking up front, he yep. can find a hole and he can get into the secondary quick. Joy with the extra point. It is up and it is good. So the Waynesville Tigers on top now by the score of 28 to zip. And we may have a mercy clock running in the second half. 11.43 left to go before that happens. The KOZQ 102.3 FM Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff seven days a week. Are you tired of your rough riding driveway? Give us a call at Willard Asphalt and get the smooth, comfortable ride you and your car deserve. From small driveways and parking lots to large parking lots and roads, we can handle all of your paving needs from start to finish. And remember, all estimates are free. Give Willard Asphalt a call today at 417-532-7107 or visit them on the web at willardasphalt.com and give your car the smooth ride it deserves. Clayton Homes of Lebanon wants your trade-ins, and they'll give you $10,000 for your used mobile home any year or any condition. And listen to this. Clayton Homes of Lebanon will take that trade-in on a new multi-section home. With lenders offering zero down with land or a trade, you can see this is one of the best trade-in programs in the nation. See Clayton Homes of Lebanon for details. Take exit 130 off I-44 or visit ClaytonLebanon.com. We are back. Marv Luton, Shane McPherson, and $100 so far into the pocket of the athletic department from Seller Sexton. They give you 25 for every touchdown. The Tigers have four on the board so far here in this contest. And Aaron Choi will kick it off again to Hillcrest, this time from the other side of the field. And he'll put this one up in the air. Look out. It'll bounce at the 30, and it'll be fielded by oh, no. Hillcrest. Why? And I don't know why we have a penalty flag thrown on the plate. Uh, unless somebody called for a fair catch, and I don't we can't. Well, oh, that's a that's a. Um, the ball hit the ground first. That's they're it. Gonna, they're going to have to wave this, uh, throw this flag away. Unless somebody on the Tigers sideline uh, got a little close to the field of play. That's the only thing I can think of because the ball bounced. It was fielded by one of the Hillcrest Hornets, and the Waysville Tigers came and popped him. See, I don't see a flag on that. 
But uh, yeah, there was one that was throwing over there. Yeah, he took and, it away. Okay, they took it away. And well, they should have. Again, if the kid called for a fair catch and the yeah. ball bounced, it doesn't then, matter. Well, and then he grabs it. Yeah. Right. But when he left his feet, we just caught him anyway. Yep. So it's first and ten for Hillcrest. The ball is placed on their 28-yard line. And again, in the backfield, it is going to be Alex Taylor as the quarterback. Hurd is in the backfield, and we're going to have a timeout called by Hillcrest. We'll hear from another one of our fine sponsors. Back in a moment. I'm here in the middle of the beautiful Ozarks. I'm in one of the most exciting phases of my life. But it's definitely time to relocate to a place of my own. Somewhere I can power nap in peace. Where I can have my buddies over any time I want. Somewhere close to where I need to be when I need to be there. I wonder what my housing options are. Alport Beatty Communities offers move-in ready two, three, and four-bedroom homes in both single-family and townhome styles. Located in Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, our residents enjoy a secure and comfortable hometown environment with the convenience of 24-hour maintenance, lawn care services, and community events. For more information, call Alport Beatty today at 573-329-1013. We're back here, Marv Luton, Shane McPherson with you. Our game brought to you by the Pulaski County Home Health Agency in Crocker. It's quality home care provided by professionals from your hometown. Call 736-2219. Also by the Fort Wood Hotels Air Hard Properties. Now hiring Marv Luton, Shane McPherson. It's Hillcrest with the ball first and 10 on the uh, 28. And they get to the outside. This is Hurd. He gets a first down. Or he is going to be close to a first down. He will pick up 10 on the play before the Tigers tackle him at the 39-yard line. Yeah, he got that left side of our line got collapsed on that one. And he had plenty of room to run. Got a 10-yard gain out of that. And another first down. The third first down for Hillcrest. The Tigers only have four first downs. But they have 28 points on the board. Right. Anytime you can score a defensive touchdown, those are big things in a, in a game. You know, those can really turn the tide. You know, we had one of those against us, what, last week or the week before? Yep. Last week, and that for us, it kind of deflated them and helped us. And here's the handoff. It goes to Hurd again. He goes off of right tackle this time. The Tigers meet him, but not before about a two- or three-yard gain on the play. Yeah, Mike can't be real happy with that. Mike Klutz, the defensive coordinator, our coaches on the defensive side, aren't probably pretty happy with that. Right now, they're getting a little bit too much per play. So that brings up a second down now and six. Tigers are shifting as they... And sending. And they are sending. Here they come. And here's the pitch back right to Hurd. And he is going to go off left tackle. My goodness, there's a whole bunch of people... Over there, and he gets popped. He got to the outside. He gained about gains of maybe a yard or two on the play. They're going to spot this. They're only going to give him one. Yeah. This kid, for a sophomore, runs awful hard. He's had every, almost every carry except for the Wildcat carries. This is a big play for them at third and four. And here come the Tigers, and again, they stop. They don't jump. That's, that's Deron Anderson. Yeah. He, was, he was coming on the blitz. From his linebacker position. They're checking. Again, in the three-point stance on the left side is Deshaun Mabry um, Lyles. And this is going to be short of a first down off of right tackle again. That is their uh, running back. And the herd is just, uh, they are really using him an awful lot here. But it's going to bring up fourth and short. And I'm sure trailing 28 to nothing, they have nothing to lose. Let's go for it. Yeah, I know. Except seven more points. So... Let's let's get a stop here, Tigers. Fourth and three. He's stacking the box up. We've got two corners. We're single man coverage. We're stacking the box up. Here we come. Backers are going to be coming. Again, Marion Fiamme and Darren uh, or Davon Smith. And here is a quarterback Look keeper out. up the middle. And a little bit of running room to the 20 all the way down to the uh, 25-yard line. Pass the 30 to the 25. A huge run that time by the quarterback. That was Alex Taylor. That was a gain of 28 yards for Taylor, his first run of the night, actually. You know, everybody, he was, he's been handed off to Hurd and handed off to Hurd. He faked the handoff this time, and he's not only to Hurd, but also uh, to Caleb Dorgan, who was going across the uh, outside. 
He uh, faked the toss to him and then kept it and shot up the middle. Fooled the Tigers completely. Kids went off the key. First Whoop. and ten. There we go. And here's a uh, keeper again to the outside. Nowhere to go that time. And we don't have a number 28 here on our roster from Hillcrest. Okay. So. And that's who the ball carrier was. So, again, uh, the Hillcrest Hornets maybe had uh, some different uh, players that might have either forgot the uniforms, got their uniforms ripped up. Uh, there are several uh, Hillcrest Hornets down here on crutches. Uh, about three or four on crutches, and there's uh, two of them uh, on the sidelines with the jersey on in street clothes. Uh, so, again, uh, they got a banged up Hillcrest Hornet team here. It is second down now at about 14, and this one is handed off again uh, to the uh, first back out of the backfield. And that was I hurt. believe that's, that was hurt again. He is going to pick up, uh, let's see, they were looking at what? Uh, Third, they were looking at third and about uh, 13. Now it's going to be, picks up three in the play, so now it's going to be fourth down and 10, or is that third and 10? It's going to be third and 10. Third they and had 10. second and about 13. Now they're third and 10. Ball at the 26-yard line of the Waynesville Tigers. They're milking this play clock down to the end. It's at five. It's at four. They're going to have to call a timeout. And they are. They're going to call a timeout right before the play, co play clock uh, expires. So the second timeout called for Hillcrest. At this point in time, they want to make sure they've got all their T's crossed and I's dotted. We'll be right back. Carpet. Think soft. Just imagine the softest things in your life. Your fluffiest house slippers that tickle your toes. That tender teddy bear that snuggles in bed. Now, Shaw Floors has brought the softest that you love to your carpet. New Caress by Shaw Floors. Caress Carpet by Shaw Floors is an amazing combination of softness and durability. You've got to see it and touch it to believe it. Find Caress by Shaw Floors at Buckhorn Flooring in Buckhorn. Corn. Barb Luton, Shane McPherson with you. Tigers on top by the score of 28 to nothing. Here's 734 left to go in the first half. Tigers scoring three, four, or three touchdowns rather in the opening quarter. Uh, took advantage of two fumbles by the Hillcrest Hornets and went into the end zone. One of them on a fumble recovery by Eric Richardson. Yeah, this I think this is a big series for for the Tigers right here, just out of a pride standpoint. I mean, I, I know they'd like to throw up a goose, goose egg defensively for a half against these guys. Third and 11. Here's Keller. He is being rushed. He's chased out of the pocket. He is going to be grabbed from they behind and making the play. That time is the freshman, Jashawn Mabry Lyles for the Tigers. Real rack up a sack. And that's a five-yard loss on the play. That's going to bring up fourth and 15 for Hillcrest. Well, Duran had a straight shot at him. He came off that edge and had a straight shot at he him. He missed him, but, I mean, you're right. He turned him inside, and that's when Mabry Lyles came up and wrapped him up and was able to drop him. Right. The only thing Duran, I don't think Duran thought the quarterback saw him, and he dipped him because he didn't break down. Otherwise, he would have really ripped him. Taylor back to throw, and he throws oh, behind the receiver, and I don't think... Uh, that uh, Dante Sample was even looking for that pass. He had his back turned, so Hillcrest will turn the ball over on downs at the 30-yard line of the Waynesville Tigers, and the Tigers' offense comes back on the field with 6.56 left to go here in the, third, uh, in the uh, second quarter. Pretty, plenty of time to put it on there. You know, I, 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 know, I know these boys would love to have where they just punish somebody and they're playing very, very well tonight. Very succinct, you know. A couple of penalties too much. We'll always find one of those categories that we can get into. But other than that, the offensive line, we've had some changes. I don't know if you've seen or not, Marv, but our center's moved out to tackle. Our tackle's moved yeah. into center. We've got a, a couple of changes on our offensive line. LJ Bean back in the game now for the Waynesville Tigers. He will follow his blockers, roll to the outside on his feet. He'll gain six on the play. It's going to bring up a second down now and four. L.J. Bean on the quarterback keeper to the outside. Yeah, good for L.J. L.J. does a good job out there. He works real hard, but, you know, you know, he and Mike were splitting time at the beginning of the year, and then he exclusively went to Mike, but now in week four we're seeing a little bit both of them again. We still have uh, Jacob York, Charles Willingham, Davon Smith, Antonio Pearson, and Gavin 
Kaawa on the uh, offensive line. Here is Butler Lawson up the middle, and he's got some running room. I'm sorry. No, it's not. That is the Vander Bradford. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, they look an awful, bit, awful lot alike. 34. To, when they run. I'll tell you what. That is the yeah. Vander Bradford. He picks up a first down. I'll tell you, there was a hole oh, off man. of left guard that was huge. The offensive lineman, again, that was number 74, uh, Davon Smith, that made that hole, and Bradford found it, and up the middle he went. And those backs really led well for him there, too. So Evander Bradford back in the backfield again for the Tigers. He will be the lead blocker for L.J. Bean to the outside, and he gives Bean a little running room, and Bean's able to get the ball down to the 20, about the 26-yard line, and that is going to be enough for another first down for the Tigers. Well, I believe that Coach Haynes was telling us the truth today. That he was going to run the ball? I believe, he, <laughs> I believe he's just spot on with his play, Colin. I don't think he's trying to fool anybody tonight. Again, Bradford back in the backfield. He is the only one in the backfield. A couple of slots set up on each side of the quarterback, L.J. Bean. One of them is Ian Williams. The other one is Deron Anderson. Williams goes in motion. Here is the snap, the handoff to Bradford, and he goes up the middle, and he's going nowhere, and hopefully that didn't get a leg bent underneath him. Nope, he's getting right back up. That's good news. Yep. Because that did not look good. No. We didn't get the block there that we needed to that time. Looks like we've got maybe is our. I would. I'm going to go ahead and say that our number two backfield is in there right now. Our number two backfield. And we've got a second down now and ten for the Waynesville Tigers, and we have another timeout on the field that'll give us a chance to hear from another one of our fine sponsors. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So that would make lunch the second most important meal of the day. And frankly, we don't see room for a number three. So come see us for the most amazing breakfast and lunch experience ever. So good you can skip dinner. Wow. Which is good because we're not open for dinner. It's home cooking at its finest. It's Westside Cafe in the Westside Shopping Center in West Waynesville. Dave and the gang get there early in the morning preparing their breakfast and get things prepared for their luncheon special. Plenty to eat and they'll still keep the prices reasonable, which is why the parking lot is always full. And that's what you'll be when you leave. Full of the great tasting breakfast and lunches at Westside Cafe. Open at 6, Monday through Saturday. Well, it's a water break. Uh, the officials needed a drink of water and they can do that this time of the year. Uh, due to the heat of the late summer, if you will. <laughs> Haven't had much of a fall. Of course, fall does not officially start till Monday. Right. And let's hope it starts, too, because it's been awful hot this month. Yeah. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired of the heat. Me as well. Again, L.J. Bean back at quarterback. Evander Bradford is the running back for the Tigers. Bean to throw across the middle. Pass is caught to the outside. And scampering down toward the end zone. Is that A.J. Martin? 19. Okay, that's Marion Fiamme. Uh, or it's an 18 is Levi Garcia, and I could not pick up whether that was an 18 or a 19 uh, that caught that thing. Was that Fiami? Fiami? Fiami, Fiami is... Fiami, uh, it was Fiami. Okay, so uh, another touchdown for the Waynesville Tigers, and this one, again, from the... Yeah, let's see, about, that was about the 18-yard line, so an 18-yard pass from Bean to Fiami into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Makes it 34 to nothing. Extra point attempt by Choi. It's up and it is no good. He missed it to the outside. So extra point, no good. And that makes it 34 to nothing. And that does not get the mercy clock running in the second half, does it? No, it doesn't. But there's still, there's still time. All right, the Tigers kick off when we come back. At Lindsay Chrysler, Jeep Dodge in St. Robert, we're here to serve you with outstanding sales and service. Whatever your preference, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, along with access to Ford and Chevrolet, all under one roof. At Lindsay Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, you'll also find the area's largest stock of used vehicles with over 300 to choose from, all clearly marked on windshields and online. See for yourself with a visit to Lindsay Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, 909 Missouri Avenue, St. Robert, or online at lindsaydodgechrysler.com. 
lot of families are choosing vacations closer to home this year, but that doesn't mean you have to take the adventure out of your family fun. Odyssey Scuba wants to help you discover how much fun and how affordable scuba diving in Missouri can be. Local dive trips each month give you more choices of places to go and things to do. Check us out at moscuba.com or stop by Odyssey Scuba in downtown Waynesville to see for yourself all the adventure you could be having close to home. Odyssey Scuba, let's go diving. 34-0, Waynesville on top of the Hillcrest Hornets after the 18-yard pass from LJ Beam to Marianne Fiamme. And the Tigers booting, booting it away again, and that is Aaron Choi. He poops You're gonna it, let it go up again. in the air. Ball is loose, and it is caught at the 27-yard line and knocked out of bounds is the Hillcrest Hornet receiver. Again, that is Lucas Nave who uh, made the play on that for Hillcrest before he was knocked out of bounds. So the Waynesville Tigers, again, will stick their defense on the field. Their defense has not been on the field very often here That's in the good. first half. Yeah. That's good. I can't believe they're letting that bounce, though. We're an ace away at getting one of those. First and ten for Hillcrest. Again, quarterbacking the Hornets is Alex Taylor. In the backfield is Hurd. Still got our first team defense out there, though. And we have a whistle on the play. And do we have uh, too many men on the field? Or do we have maybe an equipment uh, malfunction? You know what? I think may have Joe may have taken a timeout because we may have had too many few men on the field. Okay, apparently we had uh, somebody on the field that had some equipment issues, so he had to go off the field. So it's going to be first and ten for Hillcrest. Hurd gets the handoff, and he is going to be grabbed as he was going Number through eight. the line of scrimmage. Good play that time by Ian Williams of the Waynesville Tigers. Yeah, very good play. He read that very well, shot the gap, got him down before it started. Another Hillcrest guy down. Slowly, slowly getting up is going to be Dante Sample. And he might have been part of that uh, twist uh, that was uh, underneath right. all that pile. Right. Because when the Tigers shot the gap, when Williams shot it, uh, he grabbed the uh, running back and spun him around. And I think maybe the running back might have fallen on the back of Sample. Mm -hmm. And he, again, is on the ground right now being attended to by the staff here at Hillcrest. Another one of our fine sponsors is Sacalaris Ford of Rolla. Right now, they are on West 7th Street in the heart of downtown Rolla, and they are getting ready to move to 1621 Martin Springs Drive in Rolla in their new facility that is being built. Should be in there by the uh, either the end of October or early November. That is Sacalaris Ford in Rolla. Marv Luton, Shane McPherson with you here. 438 left to go in the opening half. Waynesville Tigers on top, 34 to nothing. Next week, the Hillcrest Hornets come to town, and then we go to Rollo the following week. You mean Central? I, I mean we're Central. At, yeah. We're at Hillcrest. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. That's right. To correct me. That's Cent fine. No, oh, that's okay. So, yeah, Central, to a, another a good opportunity for us. And then I think one of the biggest games for us of the year, I really do, uh, with Rollo. Just from the matchups that we've seen so far, that's going to definitely be the one – where we're going to have to have a performance like we're having tonight. You know, uh, we know that last week Hillcrest or Rolla beat Hillcrest 35-14. to 14. You know, so right now it seems kind of like a balanced kind of thing. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. Well, the Rollo Bulldogs, from what we saw in the Jam. uh, Jamboree, the, they run the wishbone, and they were pretty good at it. But even in the Jamboree, we had some we had some decent success against the wishbone. I thought we moved I thought we moved the ball real well offensively against Raw that night, but and defensively we, we stuck it right in there and did did a nice job on them defensively. So getting up again, that is Dante Sample. He looks like uh, he he's walking off the field on his own power, and again that's always good news. Yes, it is. Maybe not a full speed, but after a tumble like that, you know, maybe take a break for a minute. Well, yeah, you, you look down here at the infirmary right in front of us. Oh, my gosh. There's one, just... two, three, four. There's five of them uh, sitting on the bench, and three of them have uh, crutches. Uh, and the other two, well, one uh, is uh, Deion Jackson. Uh, he's got his shoulder pads on. The other one, Anthony Taylor, does not. And that was one of their linebackers, and uh, I guess he's a pretty good player, too, number six. 
So it is a second down now and 10 for the Hillcrest Hornets. And here is the quarterback, the handoff. Nowhere to go. Waysville Tigers wrapping up our number 37 that we do not have a name for. Is that number 37 again? Yeah, that's, that's the no-name tailback. Well, we've had two of them now. We have 28 and 37. Oh, maybe, let's check that. It might have been 32. I might have read the number wrong. I believe that is. Okay, that, that is uh, number 32, which it is was. Tyrell Hurd. And he got four on that one. So it brings up a third down now, and six ball to the 31-yard line of Hillcrest. 3.56 left to go here in the opening half. Again, the quarterback, Alex Taylor, getting uh, some signs from the sidelines. He's ready, and he takes the snap, and he hands off to Hurd. Hurd goes up the middle. He's going to be close. He is going to be close to a first down. You're right. Gets it up to the 37-yard line is where they're going to mark it. Needs to, the get, needs to get to the 38. Okay. So he is going to be about, let's see, where they actually put it down. I think he's a half a yard short. But we're going to, we're going to measure. I say he does not have it. I, I'm going to say he got it by an inch. Okay. We will soon find out. As they stretch the first down marker, and it looks like you might be correct. First down by an inch. Boy, that's good eyes, there, McPherson. <laughs> no, that's good guess, Mark. <laughs> that's a good guess. There was no eyes on that. You know I'm. <laughs> well, that was an excellent guess then. Thank All you. right. Go Thank buy, you. Go, we'll buy go, go buy a lottery ticket tomorrow. I think, I think I will on the way home. All right. <laughs> Three, 319 left to go here in the opening quarter. Waynesville are in the opening half. Waynesville on top, 34 to nothing. Hillcrest with the football on their own 37-yard line, first and 10. Taylor pitches to the outside to Hurd. Hurd rolls to the outside. We have a penalty flag thrown Gotta in front of the Waynesville Tiger bench, and there is that's going to move them back 10, most likely a hold on the outside or a block in the back. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a hold on the... Well, actually, the, uh, there's, apparently there's two flags on the play, unless that one just flew all the way over to the hash mark because that was thrown in front of the Waynesville Tiger bench by the side judge. Yeah, he threw it out there quite a ways. Okay. okay. So and they're going to take it from there. That's the new rule this year. Okay, so they will get it from the 41-yard line, and the indication from the referee is a holding penalty against the Hillcrest Hornets. That is their first penalty is that of this right? football game. Yes. Huh. So, well, we're going to have about a second and 17 here. Or first. Yeah, it would be a first down. Yep, first, first down and 17 because they're going to march this thing all the way back to about the 30-yard line. So you're right, first and uh, first and 17. They've got second and 17 on the scoreboard. Right. But I think, you get to, I think you get to play that down again, don't you? Yes, you do. That's what I thought. So Taylor getting the uh, signal from the sidelines from his coaches. Hurd again is in the backfield, and Hurd will get the ball off of right oh. tackle. He goes, and a good play that time by the Waynesville Tigers. Getting up off the bottom of that pile for Waynesville is Maurice Fiamme yeah, making the tackle that time. Made quite a hit on that, man. No gain. So we are going to stop the clock, and we are going to have another timeout. This one, the Waynesville Tigers will call their First time out. They must know I need to play some commercials and hear from some of our there fine sponsors. Go. There you go. If you or one of your loved ones need health care services, the last things you should have to worry about are where to go, how to get there, or how you're going to pay for it. Phelps Health offers convenient locations in Rolla, Salem, St. James, Vienna, and Waynesville. And with services available to assist with insurance coverage, payment options, and transportation, establishing care has never been easier. From the moment you arrive at one of our locations, we are committed to helping you make your health visit as seamless as possible. Phelps Health, our family caring for yours. Hi, Al Morgan from Secularist Ford Lincoln of Rolla. Are you considering buying a new or pre-owned vehicle? Do you find yourself shopping around trying to find the right vehicle at the best deal? Look no further, because here at Secularist Ford Lincoln of Rolla, we have the largest selection of pre-owned and certified vehicles and are known for giving top dollar on trade-ins along with huge rebates. Check us out online at SecularistFordRolla.com. Secularist Ford Lincoln of Rolla, where there's regular savings and then there's Secularist savings at 625 West 7th Street, where the customer is always number one. With 2.35 left to go here in the opening half, the Waynesville Tigers all over the Hillcrest Hornets, 34 to uh, nothing 
Hillcrest with the football, and this is going to be a again. quarterback keeper, and up the middle he goes is Alex Taylor, and he is on the move, and Taylor will go into the end zone untouched again from the, where was he? He was at the 32-yard line. So a huge touchdown, a 68-yard scamper for Alex Taylor. Again, he that was the play earlier, Shane, that they scored, uh, that right. they uh, ran for 40 yards. This time they take it for 68. Well, they got to read their keys. You know, there's somebody who's supposed to stay on that quarterback when they're running that, you know, triple look where he's either going to give the dive, the, the handoff on the jet, or possibly the quarterback takes it. So we missed our assignment twice on that tonight. So with 2.24 left to go in the second, the Hillcrest Hornets are on the board. You know, every team they've played so far this year, they have scored at least 12 or 14 points. So they can put points on the board. Right, they can. They've proven that. That Just that last run right. <laughs> certainly proved that. The extra point attempt, and the Tigers oh, block wow. it. The Tigers were all over that thing. There were one, two... Two Tigers that blocked it, but unfortunately, those two Tigers, they ran into each other, both trying to block that punt or block that kick. And both of them are slow getting off the ground. One of them is the freshman, Jashawn Mabry Lyles. The other one's he's still late. Right. He's all right. He's walking. He's walking off slowly. And the other one, I didn't, I was not able to pick up a number. He's laying down at the uh, nine yard line on his back. I think that ball just caught him straight in the gut. Well, Mabry Lyles is jogging off the field on his own power, and he's rolling his shoulder, uh, so uh, that's good news. It looks like he'll be able to come back into the game. And you're at the other one. If uh, if he took one in the gut, uh, the kick, because, that I mean, they did get the kick up, uh, but unfortunately it was right into the, into the gut. Right. I just think he needs to get his win back or – but he's not moving. 34 to six is our score as the Hillcrest Hornets again stick one on the board, a 68 yard touchdown run by Alex Taylor. The quarterback on the fake to the outside and then he tucked it and ran off of right tackle all the way into the end zone untouched. Okay, he's moving and he's sitting up. And I'm not sure we still can't we still can't get a number yet. I'm thinking, is it Jared Hyatt number ten? It could very well be. He is on the special teams and we haven't called his number no. uh much this uh this game. Of course, we haven't called a lot of defensive players. Uh, and he is also one of the wideouts. I don't think we've even mentioned any of the wideouts for the Tigers uh tonight. Jalen Andrews, Kevin Point said, uh Daniel McCullough and Saul DeHart. And whoever it is, he's walking off on his own power, and that is good news. That is number 10, isn't it? I, I, I still can't tell. Or is that number, well, I don't even want to guess. Yep, that is number 10. 10? 18. Yeah, that, that's 18? 18. Levi Garcia. Okay, Levi Garcia, okay, he is a senior wide receiver as well. And a D-back for the Waynesville Tigers. So Garcia on special teams. Again, he's walking off on his own power, so that's good news. Now we look over the, over the crowd over at Waynesville side, and a pretty decent crowd yep. came down here to watch the Tigers. And they, again, are putting a whooping on Hillcrest. 34-6 to six here in this contest. Waynesville will get the football for we the... Need to uh, dive deep, though, I'm just saying. For the first time. Oh. <laughs> on a kickoff. No, we got enough. And it is Butler Lawson who will let this thing go, and it will bounce into the end zone, and the Tigers will have it at the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Waynesville with 2.24 left to go here in the opening half. Again, 34-6 to six is our score. The Tigers got a 13-yard uh, touchdown sweep from A.J. Martin. Fumble recovery from Eric Richardson, an 18-yard touchdown by Butler uh, Shane Butler Lawson. 41-yard touchdown by Lawson, and then the 18-yard pass from L.J. Beam to Marion Fiamme for their scores, and then Alex uh, Taylor just went in from the 68 yard from 68 yards out for the Hillcrest score. And right. again, 2:24 left to go here in the first half. Tigers trying to—they've uh, got two minutes, 24 seconds to march this thing down the field. Okay, well now we've got 
We've got our starting unit back in there again as far as backfield. Last series we had our second team. Now we've got our first team back in there. And Lewis will hand Look off out. to Lawson. Look Lawson out. cuts the middle. Look he out. cuts to the outside. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. And here he goes into the end zone. He's going to be no, pulled down at the from ten. behind. I can't believe they caught Lawson at the 10-yard line. And they horse countered him to bring him down. I'll tell you what, you know, give number 11 credit. He, uh, Emmanuel Jackson for Hillcrest, he came all the way from the other side, took the perfect angle, the only angle, and then when Sheen turned it on, I thought it was over. But he did get an angle on him, and he got him, so it was a 70-yard gain instead of an 80, which so is pretty from, good. For, yeah, from the 20-yard line down to the 10, it is first and 10 for the Waynesville Tigers. Actually, it's at the 10 and a half, so... Uh, they can pick up a first down and still not get into the end zone. Here is not Lawson. Need it. Nope, he is going into the end zone, and Sheen Butler Lawson untouched with a 10-yard run. Do we have any yellow hankies on the field? I don't, don't see, any. see any. It's not a bad first half for Sheen. So with 2.06 left to go here in the second, 10-yard touchdown run on the following the kickoff. Wow. Uh, after a 70-yard scamper. All right. Come on, Aaron. Aaron Troy getting ready. Not enough players on the field for the Waynesville Tigers. Oh, we still got good time. Got, still got 10 seconds. So setting up at the tight end position. Uh-oh. And here is a bad snap to the outside. Oh, he kept and his balance. I, I cannot know. believe that. Look at this. Oh. The ball is dropped into the end zone. That looked like a... Patrick Mahomes play there. Uh, that was Michael Lewis, who was the quarterback of the Waynesville Tigers, on a bad snap, got up, rolled to the outside, and just kind of lofted that thing into the end zone. Right. So the uh, it, it ends up as a extra point, no good. And that makes it 40 to 6. Is Aaron trying to keep us at 34? Or the center's fault that time. Yeah, it might have been the center's fault that time. That was not a great pass. Uh, great, oh, a great snap. snap. No. We're back in a moment. We understand how important trust is to families when choosing a funeral home. Through the years, families have learned to trust Memorial Chapels and Crematory to provide them with the greatest value in funeral service and experienced staff who has made serving a lifetime commitment and affordable choices. This is Martin Vernon. On behalf of myself and the staff at Memorial Chapels and Crematory of Waynesville, St. Robert, thank you for trusting us. You're listening to KOZQ 102.3 FM, Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff seven days a week. So the Waynesville Tigers just cannot get this to 35 points. Yeah. <laughs> We're still at 34 a 42-6 lead for Waynesville. Another $25 from Seller Sexton to the Waynesville Athletic Department. Don't get us wrong. We're not complaining. We're no. just saying. <laughs> that is six touchdowns there for the Tigers. Again. Now they're going to let this one go? Nope, they're not. Oh, he wanted to catch. Wow. He caught that and on the run, the little pooch shot. That is Dalton McIntyre. I don't know. That that kind of reminds me of a play in, the, in rugby they call the hospital play. Yeah. <laughs> where, you, where you kick that thing straight up in the air and you yeah. wait for the other guy on the other team to catch it and you're uh, you're full bore. Yeah. And you lay him out. And yeah. that's what almost happened that time uh, to the uh, Hillcrest Hornet. But it's first and ten for Hillcrest. They were able to hold on to the football. Right. I, sometimes the hospital way could go both ways on that, though. Yeah, Gosh, it dang. certainly can. Ball at the 42-yard line. Hillcrest with the football. And again, Alex Taylor is their quarterback. And in the backfield again is Tyrell Hurd. And Hurd will get the football. And he will run it up the gut. He'll stay, still stay on his feet. Finally, he is hauled down by uh, several Waynesville Tigers on the play. Maurice Fiamme, uh, one of the uh, up tackles. Uh, also, uh, David Smith, one of the uh, front linemen. Helped pull him down on the play. It's a pickup of about five, second and five for Hillcrest. The ball now at the 47-yard line. Okay, they're staying with their same look. They've got the, the wing, single back with the quarterback. And here's a handoff to Hurd. He'll cut it off of right tackle, and he'll be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of two on the play. They're going to they're gonna spot this right at midfield at the 50-yard line. Okay, so now we've got... 
We're going to have a third and three, two. Third and about two. And Hillcrest will be uh, taking a, another timeout. No, the Waynesville Tigers uh, took take off. another timeout. They think they may be able to get this ball back and maybe stick something into the end zone before halftime. It's a possibility. We're coming right back. It's the place there's no place else like. Home. It's the circle of chairs around your fire pit where all the do you remembers get passed around like bowls of ice cream. It's bacon and eggs and the skillet crackling along with the laughter. At Shelter Insurance, we don't just insure your home. We insure all the memories that live inside it. Ask your agent for details. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. For a free insurance review. For auto, home, life, farm, or business insurance, see me, Mike Anthony, your shelter insurance agent in Waynesville. Stop by and see me, Dave Hallett, your shelter insurance agent in Richland. Their top-selling floor plan is getting revamped at Clayton Homes of Lebanon. They're offering huge discounts and incentives on the Breeze 2 with almost 2,100 square feet, two living areas, four bedrooms, two baths, and several modern features. Clayton Homes of Lebanon has only three of these models left, so first come, first serve. Back. We're back here, Marv Luton, along with Shane McPherson, and here is the handoff to the outside, and nowhere to go on that play. Got they one. stopped him shy of a first down by about a yard, and the ball carrier on that one is number 28 again, our one of our no-name players. Yeah, 28. Can't, I'm sorry, I can't. Don't have a number, don't have a well, We have a number, but we don't have a name. And another timeout called. I believe the Waynesville Tigers have burned their last time out here. They want this ball back. We'll be right back. He offers associate and bachelor degree programs at their Fort Wood Campus Center. Additional degree programs are available entirely online. Courses can be completed in eight-week sessions rather than the traditional 16-week semester. Sessions start five times a year, giving you multiple entry points. Park also offers additional graduate and certificate programs online. Military and civilians are welcome. Application fees are waived for military personnel. Park accepts VA benefits, tuition assistance, financial aid, and payment plans are available. Park University, a regionally accredited nonprofit university. Save time, save money, accelerate your education. 329-2798 or go online, park.edu slash go Leonard Wood. Well, it's going to be a fourth down and about a yard for the Hillcrest Hornets. They are in Tiger territory at the Waynesville 49-yard line. There's 104 left to go on the clock in the first half. Tigers on top, 40-6. to six. We've got our goal line up in here. Tigers trying to stop Hillcrest from picking up that first down, and they almost jumped offside. They, they, they were able to get back. They didn't cross the plane. Here they come. They are showing everybody coming, and here they come, and again uh, comes to the outside nope, first down for the Hillcrest Hornets. They pick up three on the play, and that will move the chains and continue the clock to tick down toward zero at halftime. Again, 58 seconds left to go here in the first half. Waynesville on top by the score of 40 to 6, and they have moved the chains, and so we'll start the clock a ticking. So watch you know Hillcrest is probably going to go for something here to try to get a quick score, and it's an empty backfield, so they've got Hurd spread out here on the flanker. Now what? Now Hillcrest is going to burn their last timeout. <laughs> so Hillcrest calls the timeout, and we'll be able to hear from some more of our fine sponsors, so don't go away. Mailbox it of St. Robert is the go-to resource for packing, shipping, printing, and business service needs. Their team of dedicated, professionally trained experts understands the meaning of superstar customer care. They focus on saving you time and money by ensuring you get the right products and services at the right price. They can pack and ship almost anything to almost anywhere in the world, but shipping is only one way they can help make your life easier. They are also St. Robert's premier copy, print, and document service center. Large or small, black and white or color, it can be printed, mailbox it, can handle it. Mailbox it, one-stop shop for dozens of business products and services that will allow you to do what you're good at while they take care of the other stuff you need to succeed. Well, we're headed toward halftime. Not quite there yet. Not but quite. Nobody has any more timeouts left to burn, so I guess uh, we're going well, we're 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 to see this last 44 seconds tick off the clock. Uh, one way or the other, the uh, Waynesville Tigers kept using theirs, thinking they were going to get the ball back, but 
uh, unable to stop the Hillcrest Hornets on a fourth and one. So Hillcrest able to uh, pick up the first down, and the immediate, immediately they call a timeout. Probably want to go over there and draw up a play, trying to uh, try to get another six on the board here. They are in Waynesville Tiger territory at the Waynesville 47-yard line. How about a pick six here? Alex Taylor back to throw, and he will throw it across the middle, and the throw is a Whoa. little low, incomplete. And incomplete pass. Incomplete yeah. for sure, yeah. That was close. It but was. he had he had the one hop. And then, uh, I guess, you know, just a little bit more mustard. A little bit more height on that because the receiver we, actually was pretty well wide open. Oh, they blew the coverage on it. He was, that was a touchdown if, he, if uh, the quarterback puts it in his hands. So second and ten now for Hillcrest. Clock stops with 39 seconds left. So we'll probably uh, try another pass. Uh, deuces left, one to the right. One in the slot. Here come the Tigers, and they chase Taylor out of the pocket. <laughs> He's on the run. He'll throw a little wounded duck out there. The pass is caught at the 11-yard line. What a great catch that time. Cutting in front of the defender that time was Logan Ahern, and that was just... I'll tell you what that reminded me of Tyreek Hill for the Kansas City Chiefs just running in front of the defender right. and taking the pass right away from the defender who thought he might have himself an interception. Well, I got to tell you, we got tackled in our backfield. Most of our linemen went down with a tackle. I don't see why the hold wasn't called, but it was a good pass. That was the seventh first down, first and ten now. For oh, the ball is loose on the ground. The Waynesville Tigers might have picked this up. I think we got up. this one. This may be the third fumble recovery for the Waynesville yep. Tigers, and it is. So the Hillcrest Hornets turn the ball over on the 15-yard line of the Waynesville Tigers with 15 seconds left to go here in the first half. So I'm sure the Tigers will come out and probably just take a knee. You think? Well, we're going to see, won't we? I think we will. I mean, the last time they went off tackle in this situation, Sheen took it 70 yards. Is Sheen back there now? No, that's Bean. That's Bradford. That's Bean and Bradford back there. Now, Sheen split out. He split out to the outside, so they may get him on an end around. They may get him on a jet sweep. Bean is in the backfield, and here comes El or here comes Butler Lawson. He has the yes, handoff. Guys. He's to the outside. He's got the guys. Down the sideline he goes. He's got still the guys. on his feet. Uh, Gets knocked out of bounds at the at 50 the yard line, but seven seconds are still left on the clock. So the Tigers have another chance for another play before the half comes to an end. So Sheen Butler Lawson again took it, followed L.J. Bean, the lead blocker that time, the quarterback being the lead blocker, and they get it up to actually the 49-yard line, their own 49. So it's going to be a first and 10, 7.4 seconds left on the clock. Boy, they've got the box so open right now. I'm just kind of wondering. Tigers with one more play, and here comes Eric Richardson into the game. He'll line up as a wide out to the left. They're giving it to Sheen outside. Deuces right, deuces left, and back to oh, throw here is that Bean. Screen. Here's that cross, uh, the, uh, the reverse screen, and this one is nowhere near close to Sheen Butler Lawson. You know what, though? Hillcrest was the first team, number 51 on that outside linebacker, was the first one that I've seen all year that sniffed that out. Yeah, he was, he he was ready. Idea. He was ready, and maybe that's why L.J. Bean threw that uh, a, a little low. Uh, he is been. replaced by Michael Lewis. They may try this again. Because Butler Lawson is going to line up on the left-hand side. Now he's going back to the right. He will line up in a slot position. Here comes your favorite play. Here yeah. comes your favorite play, brother. My wide-out screen. Yeah. Tigers don't have enough players, I don't think. They're going to have to snap this thing, and we're going to have a penalty. And it's going to be a delay of game on the Waynesville Tigers. I don't think they have enough players on the field. Nope, they didn't. But, you know, you can't take a timeout, be a penalty, so might as well just take the five and... Either way, you're going to get fun. You're going to get, get penalized gonna, five yards. Yes. So. yes, you are. So I'm anxious. Well. They're coming out again. I mean, there's only one play left. 2.6 seconds left. Tigers up 40 to 6. I'm telling you what, brother. This is your this is your screen big time. Your wide out screen. You got three or four out to the side. And here is Michael Lewis, a quarterback. And he cannot get loose. Now he fires it out. Solved the heart. 
grabs the ball on the uh, pass, and he is dropped immediately, and that will be the end of the first half. The Waynesville Tigers 40, the Hillcrest Hornets 6. We're at halftime, and we're coming back. Mailbox It of St. Robert is the go-to resource for packing, shipping, printing, and business service needs. Their team of dedicated, professionally trained experts understands the meaning of superstar customer care. They focus on saving you time and money by ensuring you get the right products and services at the right price. They can pack and ship almost anything to almost anywhere in the world. But shipping is only one way they can help make your life easier. They are also St. Robert's premier copy, print, and document service center. Large or small, black and white or color. It can be printed. Mailbox It can handle it. Mailbox It, one-stop shop for dozens of business products and services that will allow you to do what you're good at while they take care of the other stuff you need to succeed. Ah, the joys of flying from a major hub. Come on, guys, we gotta go. Wait, honey, but our flight doesn't leave for five hours. I know, but traffic could be bad. Then there's trying to find a parking spot, then the mile walk to check in, and of course security could take a while. Skip the circus and fly regional. From parking to boarding and everything in between, it's just better. Book your flight at flyflw.com. Flights to St. Louis starting at just $39. Waynesville St. Robert Regional Airport on Fort Leonard Wood. At St. Robert Family Dental, doctors Jesse Smith, Bryce Brown, and Paul Riddle do all phases of family dentistry. They work hard to make your visit enjoyable, and they deliver excellent dental care to you and your family. They have 24-hour emergency contact and accept TRICARE and most other dental insurance. St. Robert Family Dental Center, located at 441 Marshall Drive in St. Robert. Next to Arby's, call 336-5599 for St. Robert Family Dental. They're serving up breakfast, lunch, and dinner at JCK's Down Home Cooking. They're new in the former Jitters location next to the Mary's County Bank in St. Robert. From early bird specials at $3.99 to other breakfast specials, including a kid's menu, to lunch favorites that start at 10.30 in the morning, featuring burgers, patty melts, salad selections, and more. Then there's the dinner entrees with steak, chicken fried steak, pork chops, chicken, and more. Enjoy their daily specials, too, like chicken and dumplings on Sunday for only $3.99. Find JCK's Down Home Cooking on Facebook, then head for the front door. It's open Tuesdays through Sundays at 6 in the morning, closed on Mondays. On the Mother Road, Historic Route 66 St. Robert, next to the Mary's County Bank. Remember Granny's house on a Sunday afternoon? It's back with JCK's Down Home Cooking. Back here at halftime, Marv Luton along with Shane McPherson. It is 40 to 6. The Waynesville Tigers all over the Hillcrest Hornets. The Waynesville Tigers took the opening kickoff and got that at the 45-yard line and marched it 55 yards down the field. A.J. Martin went in on a 13-yard sweep. A extra point by Aaron Choi was good. And then the Tigers kicked off to the Hillcrest Hornets. Their second play from scrimmage, they fumbled the ball right around the 15, or actually the 20-yard line. And it was Eric Richardson who picked up the ball. It was a bad exchange between the quarterback and uh, the wide receiver coming around on an end around, but the ball got loose, and Eric Richardson was able to keep scooping it, trying to pick it up, but it would fall out of his hands, and then he kicked it, then he picked it up, and had some help keeping uh, Hillcrest away from him, and found he fell on it into the end zone uh, for the touchdown. So that was kind of like a little bit of a circus play. Yeah, it uh, was. <laughs> to say the yeah, least. Yeah, it was. And then the Waynesville Tigers again. After that, uh, they just they, their offense just was too much for the Hillcrest Hornets. Uh, they recovered another fumble, uh, went in from the 18-yard line with Sheen Butler-Lawson. Butler-Lawson had a 41-yard touchdown run. He also had a 10-yard touchdown run after a 70-yard scamper, an 18-yard pass from L.J. Bean to Marion Fiamme, and that is the scoring for the Waynesville Tigers here in the first half. They lead it 40-6. to six. We thought it was going to be um, goose eggs on the board for Hillcrest, but with 2.24 left to go, Alex Taylor took the ball 68 yards on a fake to the wide out, and he scampered into the end zone, and that's where we stand, 42-6 here at halftime. Three turnovers for Hillcrest. All three have been turned into touchdowns by the Waynesville Tigers, who, by the way, have 50 yards in penalties. That's six penalties for 50 yards, one penalty for 10 yards for the Hillcrest Hornets. Shane has some 
stats, to say the least. Some good ones if you're a Tiger fan when we come back. Your all-star Chevy dealer of the Ozarks is Lowe Chevrolet. It's at 156 off 544 in Waynesville with an all-star lineup of Chevy Silverado pickups and two- and four-wheel drive. The Equinox, Camaro, Corvette, the popular Malibu, Suburbans, and Tahoes. Lowe Chevy has the lineup with the incentives to put you behind the wheel. There's an all-star inventory of pre-owned, too. Their all-star awards program gives you points and dollars toward accessories and even service. Where their service Service department is armed with the latest product knowledge and connected technology to service your vehicle with unmatched capability, no matter the model. Low Chevrolet exit 156 off 544 on Eichard Avenue in Waynesville. Open the door to a new Chevy today. You're listening to KOZQ 102.3 FM, Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff seven days a week. Seller Sexton is your place to get your next truck during the All-American Sales Event. With discounts and rebates totaling over $12,000 off on 2018 F-150 XLT. There's 0% financing with approved credit, plus up to $3,500 in rebates. And Ford salutes all of our military members, police, fire rescue, and first responders with $1,000 in additional savings. Whether it's half ton, three quarter, or one ton, we are your local truck headquarters. Every new Ford from Seller Sexton comes with Tires for Life. Shop us online at SellerSexton.com. And remember, Seller Sexton sells satisfaction. Are you tired of your rough riding driveway? Give us a call at Willard Asphalt and get the smooth, comfortable ride you and your car deserve. From small driveways and parking lots to large parking lots and roads, we can handle all of your paving needs from start to finish. And remember, all estimates are free. Give Willard Asphalt a call today at 417-532-7107 or visit them on the web at willardasphalt.com and give your car the smooth ride it deserves. Back here at halftime, 40-6, to six, Waynesville all over the Hillcrest Hornets. Tigers trying to go to 2-2 two and two on the season, and if they have even um, a little bit of a second half like they did the first, this thing will have the mercy clock running in no time at all. Oh, yeah, I mean, very impressive. We'll go over uh, Hillcrest first. They had 184 total. They ran the ball 25 times for 148. Out of those 25 times, Mr. Hurd, the sophomore, ran at 16 of them. Uh, they had uh, they were one for five in their passing for 36 yards, made them 184 total. On the other side, we passed the ball t- uh, six attempts, completed two for 28 yards. Those were both completed by Mr. Bean. Our running, we ran the ball 22 times for 327 yards. Uh, Sheen had the ball 10 times in the first half. For 243 yards, so I'm thinking that's 24-3 a carry. That's not too bad, but a real balanced attack tonight. Our line's getting a good push. Our defense is playing about like they do. I mean, they play real tough, but they're they're getting a little more success tonight. They, I know that they're going to go in there and talk about reading their keys on that quarterback and make sure we're covered. And and Joe's got kind of a tough task right now to make sure that the team stays focused because the last thing in the world that you want to do is come out in the second half flat-footed because if you do, you know, and give them a, a hope or an inkling because you know that Rolla's got an eye, eye, eye on this game as well as Parkview do, does. And, you know, that score is going to mean a lot to a lot of people at the end of the game tonight. You know, we, we, need, to, we need to really come out here and send a message in the second half, you know, for however long we need to. You know, not to embarrass anybody, but send a message that, you know, okay, we took a couple of losses by real good teams, but we're, we're a good team. We're a real team, too. See, the uh, youth football teams here at Hillcrest are uh, being introduced here at halftime. And so are uh, the little, the youth cheerleaders. Now, I've seen youth cheerleaders in uh, several different venues that yes, we, we have been to. Yes, we have. I have never seen as many youth cheerleaders as we have at Waynesville. In all the places we have been to, basketball arenas, uh, football stadiums, when they bring the youth cheerleaders out at Waynesville, let me tell you, there are a ton of them. I mean, last year it had to be 200. Oh, it had easy. to be 200 because we just said, is this line ever going to stop? We got through with the stats. They still weren't lined up yet. They were trying to line people up. 
It was the cutest thing you'd ever seen, but it was a plethora of girls everywhere. Yeah, and uh, they had, I mean, they did a good job here, don't get me wrong, but they just didn't have anywhere near the numbers uh, we have over in Tiger Town, and that's a credit to uh, the uh, cheerleading staff at uh, Waynesville High School because they're the ones who get it together, and they are the ones who uh, do all the training and everything else. 40-6 to six at halftime. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. The Retroplex at 512 Old Route 66 in St. Robert, a locally family and veteran-owned fun center with the emphasis on fun spend time together as family with friends or just hang out retroplex offers roller skating and laser tag as well as a jungle gym and arcade plus toddler town a protected area for three and under all for one admission price retroplex has a delicious variety of snacks sodas and more retroplex the only place to be for family fun in the waynesville st robert portwood area and beyond Ah, I'm here in the middle of the beautiful Ozarks. I'm in one of the most exciting phases of my life. But it's definitely time to relocate to a place of my own. Somewhere I can power nap in peace. Where I can have my buddies over any time I want. Somewhere close to where I need to be when I need to be there. I wonder what my housing options are. Alford Beatty Communities offers move-in ready two, three, and four bedroom homes in both single family and townhomes. Styles. Located in Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, our residents enjoy a secure and comfortable hometown environment with the convenience of 24-hour maintenance, lawn care services, and community events. For more information, call Balfour Beatty today at 573-329-1013. At Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge in St. Robert, we're here to serve you with outstanding sales and service. Whatever your preference, Chrysler Jeep Dodge, along with access to Ford and Chevrolet, all under one roof. At Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge, you'll also find the area's largest stock of used vehicles with over 300 to choose from, all clearly marked on windshields and online. See for yourself with a visit to Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge, 909 Missouri Avenue, St. Robert, or online at Lindsay Dodge Chrysler. Com. Dr. Shane and Tabitha Ogle are chiropractors serving Waynesville and the surrounding areas. They and the rest of the team at Ogle Chiropractic are committed to providing chiropractic solutions to address your unique needs. Whether you're experiencing back pain, neck pain, headaches, or even muscular tightness and tension, you may be searching for pain relief after an accident, experiencing an injury, or if you suffer from a specific condition like chronic back pain or a spinal condition. Even if you're looking to improve your overall health, Ogle Chiropractic can help you attain your everyday wellness goals. To schedule an appointment, call 573-774-4177. That's 774-4177. You're listening to KOZQ 102.3 FM, Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff seven days a week. It's time to bring the beauty of the outdoors in. More than ever, people seek natural elements to create balance and comfort at home. Smarter flooring options provide the ability to design places perfect for spending time with family and friends. Made in the USA and built on a proprietary Stabilitech core, Epic Plus Extreme Nature features longer, wider hardwood planks, perfect for open floor plans and creating visual impact. Proven for performance and long-lasting beauty, Extreme Nature makes a stunning visual impact on any room. Visit Buckhorn Flooring in Buckhorn today and see for yourself. Attention, are you looking for a great place to work with new salaries and new bonuses and to be appreciated for compassionate care? Piney Ridge Behavioral, a treatment health center for adolescents, is hiring people with passion. Openings for youth care workers, RNs, LPNs, and licensed therapists with new sign-on bonuses. Applicants must be 21 and have a high school diploma or equivalent education. Contact Abby at 573-774-4034 for more information. Walk-in applications are accepted or apply online at Indeed.com. Well, the Waysville Tigers are back out on the field at halftime as they get warmed up and get ready for the second half of this football game. Waysville on top by the score of 42-6. The Waynesville Tigers will be 
at home next Friday night as the Springfield Central Bulldogs come to town. And then the week after, we will be at Rolla. West Plains comes to Waynesville on the 11th of October the 18th. We'll be at Glendale on the 25th. Springfield Parkview comes to Tigertown. And that is the rest of this Waynesville a Tiger schedule. Uh, next week, we're going to have some softball for you here on 102.3. On your FM dial, we uh, did some uh, Frisco League Ozark Conference softball uh, last week. We're going to do a little GVC Ozark Conference softball on Monday, uh, the uh, 23rd, as the Cuba Lady Wildcats will come to Waynesville to take on Rochelle Malbach and her Waynesville Lady Tigers. Uh, Parkview will be at Waynesville on the 24th on Tuesday, and then Thursday, the Glendale Lady Falcons are in town. And then the Friday uh, at Dixon, we unfortunately will not be able to bring you that one on the 27th because we will be in uh, Tigertown at the stadium with Springfield Central coming to town. For these Hillcrest Hornets, they have Camdenton next week at Camdenton. Then they get Springfield Central on the 4th. They're at Parkview on the 11th. Uh, the 18th, they have Kickapoo here. And then they are at Lebanon to wrap up the season on the 25th before districts and again Hillcrest in last place in their district at this point in time while the Waynesville Tigers uh, are uh, hopefully poised to jump back into first place in their class 5 district with Glendale along with Springfield Central and the Parkview Vikings. Again it's 40 to 6 here at halftime we have the second half coming up Hillcrest making their way back onto the field back in a moment. A lot of families are choosing vacations closer to home this year but that doesn't mean you have to take the adventure out of your family fun. Odyssey Scuba wants to help you discover how much fun and how affordable scuba diving in Missouri can be. Local dive trips each month give you more choices of places to go and things to do. Check us out at moscuba.com or stop by Odyssey Scuba in downtown Waynesville to see for yourself all the adventure you could be having close to home. Odyssey Scuba, let's go diving. Does this sound like you? Or maybe your inner biker sounds like... No matter what motorcycle motor is music to your ears, Shelter Insurance has a policy that's music to your wallet. Shelter insures your fun stuff. Motorcycles to riding mowers, ATVs to RVs, bikes to bass boats. If it rides, rolls, or floats, we can cover it. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. For a free insurance review. For auto, home, life, farm, or business insurance, see me, Mike Anthony, your shelter insurance agent in Waynesville. Stop by and see me, Dave Hallett, your shelter insurance agent in Richland. Well, Coach Joe Haynes had his Waynesville Tigers back on the field first. So hopefully, like you said, Shane, they uh, did not lose focus in the uh, locker room at halftime with the uh, the big lead that the Tigers have at this point in time, 40-6. to six. Uh, We'll see what the second half brings. I don't look for Waynesville to do much th many things different. No, I don't really either. I, I got a chance to speak with the coaches real briefly as they were walking through here. And Asked him, are we going to see more of the same? They said, yep. I said, starters are going to play a while. He said, yep. So we're going to see the starters for a little bit. And hopefully we can get this game, I guess, out of control is what we're looking for tonight. Maybe a little bit as far as the score goes anyway. Well, I, you know, I don't think they want to run the score up on the Hillcrest Hornets. I think they want to just maybe uh, do some things that uh, they, they want to continue to do through the uh, rest of the season. And that would be one thing, uh, run the football and let the offensive line uh, get a little bit more familiar uh, with their blocking schemes because that has not been one of the, uh, shall we say, um, the best parts right. of this Tiger season so far. I would agree, you know, and maybe out of control is the wrong word, maybe more comfortable with a good lead. Not to rub it in, you know, you never want to show. Be always classy, don't show anybody up, but get a comfortable lead where they, they feel confident about putting in some of these JV guys, because the more guys you can get in on games like this, the more experience varsity field gives you, the better off you are. And you certainly uh, have experienced that as a coach of the Waynesville Tigers after the uh, 2007 season. Yep. You know, we had uh, we were ahead of a lot of player, a lot of people, uh, and Coach Rick Vernon uh, used a lot of his JV players that you know the ones that went on the trips with you. Uh, you know, on the road trips and got a chance to see them. And guess what? Next year when they came back, they were a little bit more fundamentally sound and ready for varsity football because there is a huge difference between JV and varsity. Right. Oh, yeah, there there definitely is. But, like, you know, uh, Marion Fiamme, who's a sophomore this year, made a real nice catch and got his first, you know, high school touchdown. He's a super kid. Well, you know, all the Fiammes are real good kids. Anyway, um, we, we get people to get success, you know, as a sophomore. It just brings more people out to watch it just brings more people out to play 
it's, it's good for the program, and hopefully this is one of the starts for us this year. So the Waynesville Tigers will, let's see, we'll, kick off. we will kick off to the uh, Hillcrest Hornets. We I think. Well, yeah, we, we're not real sure. Well, the referee said that they deferred, and then. I just think the referee made a mistake. I believe he did. When he was uh, going back and uh, showing everybody that uh, the um, Hillcrest Hornets were going to uh, receive the football when the Waynesville Tigers had already won the toss, and he had already showed that the Hillcrest had deferred. So, again, it's uh, Aaron Choi getting ready to boot it away at the 40-yard uh, line, waiting for the Hillcrest um, special teams to uh, enter the field and receive the kick. Okay, so let's make a prediction here, Marv. Do you think that Aaron will try to get it into the end zone, or is he going to try one of these little pooches again? You know, he does it well. He does. He does it well. Um, I think he tries to kick it deep. Okay. We'll soon see. I'm going to leave you under the bus, and I'm going to just leave it right there on. Okay. That one. I'm not going to make a call. We'll find out. Aaron Choi gets ready to boot it away. Uh, deep is Hurd. Of course, they might want to keep it away from Hurd. Yeah, I would think so. Just in case. So Choi puts his foot into it, and he nails it deep. And they will let it bounce into the end zone. It will be a touchback for the Hillcrest Hornets. And it will be first and 10 for Hillcrest on their 20-yard line. I still believe that, you know, Aaron, that's a weapon right there, that we can get it in the end zone every time. It always is kicking games a big weapon if you've got a kicker. And you we've bet. got one this year. And especially when you force a team to, like we said, go 80 yards down the field compared to 45. You give them half the field. Guess what? Right. Uh, you have cut the odds. Uh, are you have, le you know, evened up, or not even evened up the odds, but you've uh, cut it down a lot less because uh, you don't have to go as far. You have more plays when you're down at the 20 yard line to make. And we're two, Hillcrest is two players short, not one. But two players short. Now they come running on the field with 10 seconds left to go before the snap. And Alex Taylor again, the quarterback. And Tyrell Hurd in the backfield. He'll Nothing. take the handoff and nowhere to go. He gets back to the line of scrimmage before four Waynesville Tigers wrap him up and drop him and then help him back up. This kid has carried the ball a lot of times. I mean, now that's his, what, is that his 17th carry? Yeah. Josh Ash and Jacob York on the tackle for the Waynesville Tigers. Also into the game now is Aiden McFarlane on the right-hand side. He lines up as a right defensive end and in motion and a little mix-up in the backfield. And this one goes to number 28. That is Jordan Ansler. That's, we did find out his name. We did we? find out number 28. We still haven't found out number 37. Nobody knows who the mystery man is for Hillcrest. But jo <laughs> Jordan Ansler uh, wears 28, and he goes basically nowhere on that play either as the Waynesville Tigers, a uh, good pursuit that time on the line of scrimmage. Antonio Pearson uh, moving across the line very well that time for the Tigers. Well, obviously the coaches made some – defensive coaches made some adjustments at halftime because we shut this running game down in the first two sets anyway. Third and ten. Back to throw is Taylor. Here come the Tigers. He'll step up into the oh, pocket. He'll be knocked loose. loose. And the ball is going to be uh, recovered by the Waynesville Tigers. I think that's Fiamme that leaped on the loose football. Now, there are two. There is a Waynesville Tiger down there, and there is also a Hillcrest Hornet, and that is Emmanuel Kamashi. Now, who do they give this ball to? Well, they gave it to Hillcrest. But we still got a. It's still going to be a fourth down fourth now down. and 11. So Hillcrest is going to punt the football away to the Waynesville Tigers. So instead of having the ball on a fumble recovery at the 21-yard line, the Waynesville Tigers will probably have it at the Hillcrest. They don't have enough guys. They've got seven guys out there. They need four more guys. Well, that is – that is well, here comes another Waynesville Tiger finally coming out on the field. Now okay. another – here comes another Hillcrest Hornet. To, that's 10. They're <laughs> almost there. <laughs> oh, Molary and Curley, here we go. And here, here's, a, here's a penalty, and this ball is going to be fielded. Look out. This one is McCullough. He gets it at the 46-yard line, cuts to the outside, and he is going to be wrapped up and dropped at the 30-yard line. But, again, there is a penalty flag. Back in around the, well, I saw it right around the 10-yard line. It's at the 20. Right, and they've got, there were two. They, they threw one on the kick, which I'm not sure what that one was. And then the one here, I think they got Hillcrest for. 
Well, one thing we know, it wasn't too many men on the field. No, there you wasn't can't too get many. A pen, you can't get a penalty for not enough men on the field. You just play shorthanded. You just but, get a look by the referee. Are you yeah. sure you want to play with that many? Yeah. But there is a penalty flag at the 20, and there's another one at the 35. So we will start this out from the referee. And here is his first illegal okay. motion illegal on motion. the West Plains Zizzers and a personal foul on the Zizzers oh, and one on the Tigers. Ways. So they offset the penalties, and it will be first down. No, they're going to replay uh, fourth they, down. Are they going to replay the fourth down? Because they're going to have to take the five yards. Okay, and the other two offset each other, so right. they'll take the five-yard penalty. That will be the second penalty for West Plains. And they will back them up five yards, and we will re-kick this thing again. McCullough said, okay, well, we can do that. All right, now I'll bet everybody, let's see. We got uh, Logan Ahern is the punter. Yeah, we have 11 for both sides this time. Ahern will kick it away from his 10-yard line. Looking for the snap. Here it is. Here come the Tigers. They almost block it. This oh, one is kicked up almost straight up in the air, and it takes a terrible bounce for Hillcrest. That bounced at the 33-yard line and bounced all the way back to about the 25 uh, or the 24. So Waynesville will have it. That is going to net, what, a four-yard punt? Yep, four yards. I wish I could get my wedge, well, actually, wedge to buy that. Well, actually, didn't they... Uh, Tack off five yards and kick No, it. they didn't. Okay. Because it offset, so I had that mistake. And no, when it offset, they just erase everything and do it over. Okay, so a four-yard net punt for uh, the Hillcrest Hornets. L.J. Bean is the quarterback for the Tigers. And Shane Butler Lawson in the backfield, and he will get the pitch. And he Man, will go to the close. outside. He will he cut gone. it inside, That's and it. he will go to the end zone. Oh! oh! He ran into a ball, came loose. The ball came loose, and I believe Hillcrest has it. Hillcrest has the football, and yes, they do. They pop Shane Butler Lawson right around the five-yard line. They, I, somebody came in. Butler Lawson did not see him. No, he didn't. And he got popped, and that ball came out. So the Tigers fumbled the ball at the five-yard line of the Hillcrest Hornets. So Hillcrest will take the ball back over, and on comes the defense again for the Tigers. Okay, so I think, well... I was going to say we we're going to have a new quarterback, but now here comes Taylor. He's been it for most of the night. Yeah, he certainly has. Then they tried Gunner Brooks for a little bit, but they've kind of gone away from that. So Alex Taylor will be standing in his end zone. The ball at the four-yard line. Actually, I think the ball's at the three. Yeah. In motion. And they hand off to Hurd. Hurd goes off of left tackle, and he will get it off to about the six-yard line, uh, maybe the seven, before he is stopped by a host of Waynesville Tigers. That offensive line doing a pretty good job. That time, number 77, Josh Gomez for the Waynesville Tigers. The Help. quarterback kept it on that one, Marvin. That was Taylor for three. But you're right. We did read that a lot better because we had four or five Waynesville Tigers on him. So Taylor works out of the pistol formation. And he will take the handoff. This time he gives it to Hurd, and Hurd goes to the middle of, in the middle of the pile and nowhere to go that time. Helping on the tackle that time for the Waynesville defense is Joe Linkus. Where's number 21? He comes up off the bottom of the pile. Also, again, is uh, number 77, and who is the other one? And I believe that's Antonio Pearson. Yep. 77 again, Josh Gomez. So, again, these are the uh, defensive linemen who are making the plays for the Waynesville Tigers. Much better. The so guys much. down in the trenches. Third down now and about six for Hillcrest. And here is, again, uh, Taylor working out of the pistol. He will drop back. He will throw this one across the middle. The pass uh, is caught and no, dropped. No, that was good coverage by A.J. Martin right A.J. Martin was all over the intended receiver. That is going to bring up a fourth down. That was, that was intended for Landon Stoker. But again, as you said, A.J. Martin all over at the D-back position. That ball went into the hands of Stoker, and Martin ripped it out. 
And very technically correct. Came over the top like he was, shaking his back shoulder. Just very, very technically correct. Very nice job by A.J. there. Fourth and six, and the Hillcrest Hornets will punt this thing away. They have to get their other, other guy off the field. They had too many men that time. For the Waynesville Tigers, it will be Daniel McCullough standing at the 40, and he will take it at the 30. And he will reverse his Look track, out. come to the outside, Look to out. the 20, and he's going to be nailed at the 20-yard line what and a happened? penalty flag. A penalty flag late as we have a couple of uh, couple of uh, football players tangling up, uh, maybe a little extracurricular blocking going on behind, uh, right, uh, well, actually behind uh, the return man. I don't, oh. I don't know. I'm sorry, Marv. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that call because that our blocker number four, Josh, and that's Josh. Um, out. No, let's see. Yeah, Josh. Uh, Josh Ash. Right. Took two of them out. But I just okay. says he got him in the back. But okay. Yeah. All right. Doesn't really matter. Here we go. Ten yard penalty. That is sixty yards in penalties for the Tigers. <laughs> it's first and ten for Waynesville. 40-6, the Tigers on top. The ball at the 38-yard line of the Hillcrest Hornets. And again, it will be L.J. Bean as the quarterback for the Tigers. Same set. Butler Lawson in the backfield. He will take the snap and up the middle he goes. Now he cuts Man, it to the outside. Good cut, and now he's getting pulled down from behind. They grab Look his shirt, out. but they still can't get Butler Lawson. He gets it all the way inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, and that will be another first down for the Tigers. They're just they're just grabbing oh. and trying to get some part of his body. Uh, they grabbed his shirt, and he outran. He just pulled them away from that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to get it. Like what we've been talking about, his legs. His legs never stop moving, and that's the key. First and 10 ball at the 17, and here is the pitch back again. Here it goes to Sheen Butler. Lawson rolls to the outside, and he is going to be tackled inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Penalty flag down at the 5. And we have, again, some uh, That's uh, going to probably be a hold on us. Extracurricular uh, blocking uh, downfield a little ways. That one, Charles Willingham. Uh, was one of them down there. I don't know if he was involved in the penalty or not. But the, pa the uh, penalty is thrown at the four-yard line. Now they move it back to the six. Okay. And the indication from the referee is a hold on the Waynesville Tigers. So they'll move it from the six all the way back to the 16, or the seven to the 17. That is 70 yards in penalties on the Tigers. Or they finally settled on the 18. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, wherever you guys want to put the ball, hey. that is just fine with me. Right. So here we go. It is first, uh, second, and 11. And here is a sweep, and they fake the sweep. Bean on the keeper, and he Good gets job. all the way inside the 10, down to the 7-yard line. They thought they were going to get a toss to A.J. Martin. Bean saw it. Martin was covered, and Bean took, up off, or took off up the middle he went. Yeah, and, and read it really, really nice. It was a nice run for L.J. And does he pick up a first down? Should have. I don't think so. Really? Uh, I think it's going to be a, yeah, okay, first and goal to go. That yeah, is okay. a first down. First and goal to go inside the 10 at the 7-yard line for the Waynesville Tigers. Bean will hand it off to Butler Lawson, and he will dive into the end zone. The ball comes loose. No, oh, that's touchdown. a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. touchdown for the Waynesville okay. Tigers as L.J. Bean crossed the goal line. When he hit, the ball came out, and a touchdown is awarded for the Waynesville Tigers. With 6.57 left to go here in the third. Butler Lawson in from the seven. Another 25 from, from Seller Sexton to the athletic department at Waynesville. Okay, Aaron needs to get on track with an extra point. Has he missed the last two? Yes, he has. Well, the, the first one he missed... And the second one was a bad snap, so you can't well, blame him on that. Now, we've, right. got, we've got three referees that are huddling right behind the offensive line of the Waynesville Tigers. And we're going to have unsportsmanlike conduct on the Tigers. And is this going to push them back? Is that the call? What happened? 
Well, the referee's signal up here to the press box right. is unsportsmanlike conduct. That was a signal, but now he's walking over to the... Okay, they may decide to... Um... No, what they're asking him is it PAT or the kickoff. Which one do you want it on? But obviously... Well, they're going to... I don't know to... if they can do it like that. Well, apparently they are because they're going to march him back 15 yards. So that is 85. That has got to make Coach Haynes just absolutely livid over there. And now, he, now Choi is back to the 25-yard line. Now he is going to have to uh, he's going to have to attempt a 35-yarder. Here is the snap. While the coach is on the field, it is up and, and it good. is good. Aaron Choi, a 35-yard extra point. It is good. While the head referee was over there talking to the coach at the 20-yard line, the rest, of the, the rest of the referees went ahead with the play. Now, is, ah, that, is ah. that not bizarre? No, that's, that's absolutely no control by the referee and his, and, and his group. That's no control. Coach I'm Haynes. Sorry. Coach Haynes was on the thirty-yard line yes. in play, right? Uh, talking to talking to the head referee, the guy with the white hat on, and the other referees let the play go. I'm glad they did. And the back. Choi nails it for a thirty-five-yarder. We are going what? to. Ha oh, uh, now what? <laughs> delay a game on the Tigers. <laughs> what? How can that be? Well, I am. I'm not sure what is go what is going to happen here. So, are we going to get the point? We should get a point. <laughs> I'm not sure because they. Well, the ball was at the 25. If it's a delay a game on Waynesville, that brings the ball back to the 30. The referee has the ball at the 22. This makes no sense. These referees are certainly confused. And they have... Okay, so they're going to they make have, this kick it again. This they, is what they're going to do. Okay. We were on... I don't think we were on the 18. We were on the 25. We were. Don't say it too loud. Yeah, I'm not. So they are going to make Choi kick it again. But they didn't nail him for a delay a game. I don't. They didn't mark five yards off. So why are we having to kick this thing again except the fact that the referee wasn't ready? Here's the snap. Kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. Good, Aaron. Wow, good for good Aaron. Good job, Aaron. Good Thank job, Thank you, Aaron. head referee. 47-6. to six, The Tigers on top, and we're going to have a mercy clock running here in a moment. Finally, in the Fort Wood area, St. Louis style pizza, the flavor you love at a price you can afford. At Andy's Pizza, 690 Missouri Avenue in St. Robert, enjoy Andy's all-you-can-eat buffet daily from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Or every Monday, you can buy one pizza and get another pizza free. Enjoy specialty pizzas or build your own pizza with a large range of popular toppings. Lots of salads, lunch specials, and appetizers, too, such as toasted ravioli, wings, mozzarella sticks, sandwiches, and more. More. Dine in, carry out, or have it delivered in St. Robert, Waynesville, or Fort Wood. Why drive over 100 miles to St. Louis? St. Louis-style pizzas are here now at Andy's Pizza in St. Robert. With 6.57 left to go here in the third quarter, Waynesville on top, 47-6. to six. Right. The Tigers will be booting the ball away. Now you got to go deep. Don't rub it. Now just go deep. Work and on your game. Yeah, we've this let this let just let this clock run and put your defense on the field. Choi nails it and it will go into the end zone for the touchback. So it will be first and ten for the Hillcrest Hornets at the twenty yard line. If I'm Coach Joe Haynes, I'm certainly well, I mean the thing of it is you're you're winning forty seven to six. Right. But still these referees I mean, I'm, really I'm telling you, there's sure. been a, I, they've been very disorganized tonight. Very, and, very disorganized. And not really knowing and getting together on stuff. And I mean, but it's hard to get on referees when it's hard to find them. So, 
First and ten for the Hillcrest Hornets. A.J. Martin comes running on the field for the Waynesville Tigers. Tigers did not have enough players on the field. A little disorganization over there on the Tigers' sideline as well. And here is a quarterback keeper up the middle. Alex Taylor will get stuffed. We're doing much a, better on that play this yeah, half. Yeah, after a, game, a gain of only one on the play. Much better. Yeah, because the last that was the, the last time he did that, he went 68 yards for a touchdown. Right. So this I'm time sure, the Tigers read it very well. I'm sure that Coach Klutz had something to say about that at halftime. Caleb Domigan was the one who they faked it to as he came across from his end position. Now we're going to call a timeout on us. And the reason that we're doing this, everybody goes, oh, man, why would you do this? Why would you call a timeout on a running clock? Well, now you've got your second and your third teams out here. You need to get them organized. They're very excited. They're nervous. So you take a timeout, calm down, say, hey, listen, we're just going to play football here and get them all in the right spots and then let them go. So it's not a bad timeout at all by Joe. It's just an organization timeout. And we can live with the organization timeouts. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you're right. We do have we do have some new players on the field with the 35 point, or well, actually, um, a what 41 point lead 41. right now. 47 to six is the score. We are in the third quarter with 6:12 left to go. And again, this will be a running clock once the uh, timeout is over. But like Shane just said, an organization timeout for the Waynesville Tigers to get their act together. But I'll tell you one one thing I have seen, even with the varsity squad. Way too many kids running on the field right. at the very last because we don't have enough players on the field. Hillcrest because they didn't have enough players on the field. Well, I think for us, you know, you started to see that more in the middle of the second quarter when there was a lot of subbing going on. Now, for Hillcrest, I think it was because they had a lot of guys. I mean, they've gotten a lot of guys beat up tonight. Oh, yeah. they have. They, I'm sure they're, they're playing guys in there that uh, probably do not play an awful lot. Maybe no. play a lot of JV. I would think so. And here they are in a varsity situation against a team, and they're getting their butts whooped. Yeah, they are. So, 6-12 left to go, and Max Taylor winds up in the pistol formation. Hands off to Hurd. Hurd up the doing middle, and he gets job. nailed. Yep, doing a much better job on... On that run game, that's three carries for Hurd this half for no yards. Evander Bradford <laughs> in on the tackle that time for the Waynesville Tigers. So the Tiger running back is also playing a little defense. I'm not surprised at that. He's got the size to play linebacker. Oh, yes, that's he, for yeah, sure. he certainly does. A lot of times you don't want a, a talented running back playing linebacker, but if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. Well, we've had a few. Oh, yeah, we have. I can think of one that's playing for the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Yeah. Ripped the throw, and he passes oh. this out into the flat. The pat is, pass is caught by Ansler. Um, they miss a couple of tackles. Ansler is still on his feet. He is going to be hauled down at the 35-yard line, and now another penalty flag flies. Now, As that better be on them this th time. That was some extracurricular activity this time by the Hillcrest Hornets. Uh, a little bit of a pylon by Toby Filial. Oh, no. And another penalty flag flies now. So the, the one is uh, one was before the play, one was after the play. And well, if, I hope we and, sure didn't and, say anything. And if one's a personal foul, the other one would be unsportsmanlike conduct. They would be two penalties that would offset each other, but I'm sure they're going to probably walk them both off. We'll see how this all pans out. Because well, I, I I'd hope the first one, the personal foul, was against Hillcrest because our our kid got tackled. Yeah, and that was after the play. That was at the end of the play and about five yards away from the play. So then the second one, I hope, wasn't us talking. We're going to find out. Two fouls. We've got a holding foul on the – or holding penalty on Hillcrest. And now we're going to have uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on Hillcrest. And we'll have unsportsmanlike conduct. Did no. he kick him out? No, they didn't, they didn't kick him out, but the, both penalties are on the Hillcrest Hornets. Okay. Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct and the five-yard penalty. The unsportsmanlike conduct is the one the Tigers are taking. That's a 15-yarder, and that will back up Hillcrest uh, to their own 40-yard line. Now, they had it close to the Waynesville 35. So they might have they might have attacked on both penalties. Of course, uh, I think maybe where the one actually took place was 15 yards down the field. And that was about the 45. Right. So that turned out to be about a 15-yard gain, didn't it? 
Yes, it did. Taylor back to throw, and he'll fire this one across the middle, and he one hops it into the dirt, or the turf, I should say. We don't play on dirt anymore. Everything is plastic grass in the Ozark Conference. Actually, we did get a game in in dirt last year. Remember Willard? Oh, yeah, that's right. We actually had, and it was actually a little muddy. It was a little down muddy. Down there at Willard, but unfortunately, and it was, it was kind of a neat game to get yeah, involved it was. In with an old uh, mud and blood game, but uh, uh, they're not in our district this year, so we, won't, we will not face them. And they're pretty good, I hear. Yeah. Second and 10 now for Willard. High snap, handoff, and Waynesville reads it very, very well on the play. That is Elijah Stallings. For the Tigers coming up from his linebacker position. And he wraps up Jordan Ansler in the backfield. A loss of five on the play. It brings up a third down now and 15 for the Hillcrest Hornets. Well. Three minutes left to go here in the third. They're going to throw. You got it. You got to throw. Yeah, you got to throw at this point in time. You're down by 41 points. Taylor back to throw, fires this one out in the flag, caught by yep. Ansler, and then he dropped it. Okay. That was, let's see, Deron Anderson. And that's I had, at number 28. I, I, had to wait, I had to wait for him to turn around. Uh, Deron Anderson on the uh, coverage by the Waynesville Tigers. Actually, that was a little uh, button hook by Ansler. He was yeah. open for a moment. He was. It got thrown behind him just a little bit. That last ball that uh, – that Taylor threw was right on the money. This ball was a little behind him. So fourth and 14 now for the Hillcrest Hornets, and they will boot it away. Back for the Waynesville Tigers at his own 35-yard line is Daniel McCullough. Waiting for the snap. Here it is. Uh -oh. It's high penalty flag on the play. Ball is kicked up in the air, yeah, and right. everybody is going to run away from it. And the ball takes another Waynesville bounce back toward the Hillcrest side of the field. It's going to be downed at the 42-yard line, but we'll have to see what the penalty flag is on they didn't the have other side men. of the field. I'm sorry. They didn't have enough men on the on the line, Hillcrest did. And that number 36 that came in was supposed to be on the line. Oh, okay. So I'm sure that Joe will decline. Yeah, I'm sure you you, you have to decline this, and then they'll, have, they'll pick up the flag. Again, the flag is back at around the 32-yard uh, line. We'll have to wait and see what the referee tells us. He's a little slow with the, uh, okay, a procedure penalty by Hillcrest declined by the Tigers. First down for Waynesville, and the clock ticks away. One minute left to go here in the third quarter. LJ being the quarterback, he'll work out of the shotgun. Again, deep in the backfield, it looks like that is Evander Bradford for the Waynesville Tigers. I'm not surprised. And Hillcrest jumps offside. That's another five-yard penalty. No movement on the on line by the Tigers, I don't think. No. No, sir. Yep, they march it off. So, again, offside by the Hillcrest Hornets. Makes it first and five now for the Tigers. Bean will take the snap. And he will pitch to Bradford. Evander Bradford cuts to the outside. Now he's going to be hit by two different Hillcrest Hornets in the backfield. That's going to be a loss on the play. They'll drop it back about two, three yards. Right. So minus three goes Bradford's stats. Actually, they're going to mark it at the 50. They're going to give him his forward progress at the 50. So that's only a one-yard loss on the play. Got two backs, one at the wing here. Bradford's still in the backfield. And Bradford gets the handoff, goes to the outside, and he'll lunge forward for about three in the play, and that brings the third quarter to an end. Tigers 47, Hillcrest 6. We're back with quarter number four and a running clock, at least for a little while. At Lindsay Chrysler, Jeep Dodge in St. Robert, we're here to serve you with outstanding sales and service. Whatever your preference, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, along with access to Ford and Chevrolet, all under one roof. At Lindsay Chrysler, Jeep Dodge, you'll also find the area's largest stock of used vehicles with over 300 to choose from, all clearly marked on windshields and online. See for yourself with a visit to Lindsay Chrysler Jeep Dodge 909 Missouri Avenue St. Robert or online at lindsaydodgechrysler.com If you're within the sound of my voice many moons ago meant you were as close as right next door 
We've been through some changes. These days, the sound of one's voice could be across the globe. And while you may not be close, the options we have of doing business right next door is amazing. Take banking, for instance. In 1911, the doors of the Bank of Crocker swung open for the first time. 108 years later, there's four Bank of Crocker locations in Crocker, Waynesville, St. Robert, and Richland. But you could be anywhere in the world and still do your banking as if you were at one of their convenient drive-up facilities. The Bank of Crocker has kept up with the new way we do business, but you can still do it with a handshake and a smile from your locally owned Bank of Crocker. Old-fashioned values with modern-day services. Member FDIC. Marv Luton, Shane McPherson back with you. Fourth quarter, getting ready to get underway. Waynesville with the football and a 47-6 lead. LJ Bean, the quarterback for the Tigers. He'll drop back and he'll fire this out into the flat a little high. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for someone we do not have on our roster. Right. We have a lot we, of JV We might get play. a lot of that. Yeah, we're going to have life. a lot of that because we've got a lot of JV players in this football game uh, for the Waynesville Tigers. And they are not listed on the varsity roster. Arturo Gonzalez was over there. He wears number 86, and that might have been the one that they were throwing to. Here comes a whole new bunch. This is going to be our game. punt team. Yeah, this is. Uh, we are going to punt the football away. Good. On a, well, now we're going to have the referee is going to blow the whistle. And we've got a delay a game on the Waynesville Tigers. There's the flag way back there. Which, uh, you know, a delay a game now, no big deal because the clock still is running. Now the referee has stopped the clock at 10.58. Why did he stop the clock? You don't stop the clock on penalties. Now he's ready to go again. There he goes. So the Tigers again getting ready to uh, punt the football away. And Choi gets it up in the way up and out of the air. A lot of hang time, oh, but it, it bounces the wrong way again. It bounces back toward the Waynesville side, and the ball will be first and 10 at the 41-yard line for the Hillcrest Hornets. How about this stat? I'm just looking up some area games for us here. This stat right here, number two, Camington, 60 over Central at half. We're not surprised about that. No. Okay, but listen to this. Camington senior quarterback, Paxson De Laurent, had a historic first half going 25 for 29 for 415, and a school record eight touchdowns in the first half. He threw for eight touchdowns in the first half. Well, Patrick Mahomes Jr. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's pretty good. Yeah, he is. Well, yeah, De Laurent is a very good <laughs> quarterback. There's he's, a, he's the cream of the crop in the state, I believe. Yeah, he is one of the very best. Here is, again, Hillcrest uh, trying to put this ball in play. But, again, uh, they are taking their good old time right now. And there's still 25 seconds left. Uh, they have not started the play clock yet. They did now. Oh, they did now, yeah. But uh, the, in the meantime, the game clock has been running. And here is Taylor back to throw. A little screen pass. The Tigers read it well. The pass is incomplete. And I'll tell you, I thought that for a moment, um, Hurd was not going to be getting back up because he took a little bit of a shot. Uh, but it, it looks like it was a glancing blow from, yeah. Brad, from Bradford. But it was definitely set up for a big shot on that. Yeah. He just, he just happened to uh, miss the catch and got out of the way, and Evander Bradford was coming in hard. Yeah, I just and hope we can get out of here tonight without any, any, any injuries at all on both sides of the ball. Yeah, no kidding. C certainly Hillcrest doesn't need any more injuries. No. And here is Taylor back to throw. A little screen pass to the outside. Pass is caught momentarily and then dropped. That is Hurd again. Tyrell Hurd caught that thing. It was well in front of him, and he had to lunge forward to catch it. When he brought the ball back in, it squirted out behind him. Pass goes incomplete. Brings up a third and ten now for the Hillcrest Hornets. Wayne's on top, 47-6, and they will post their second W of the season as we have a running clock here in the fourth quarter. The Tigers with a bunch. A touchdown. Here's Taylor. A long well, throw caught right credit, down the man. middle of the field at the 25-yard line, and they haul it in and making the tackle on Landon Stoker. I'm not sure which one of the D-backs that was by the Waynesville Tigers. Uh, down on the play was Jeremiah Johnson, number 15. But it looked like uh, they just burned the Tiger D right over the middle 
for a big gain on the play. Well, I got to say, Taylor threw an excellent ball. Yeah, he did. He really threw it just right on the money. And it really made, you know, a big play. And on the run as well. Taylor again, back to throw. He cocks it. He hauls it back in. But he breaks a tackle. As ball coming, loose. Coming in from the uh, backfield and getting his hands on it was Andrew Richardson for the Waynesville Tigers. But he couldn't wrap him up. He gains a couple of yards on the play. Brings up a second down now and seven ball at the 20-yard line. Again, 47-6. to six. The Tigers, uh, a lot of JV players are in the ball game now for the Tigers. There are still a few varsity players. Ian Williams, I believe, is uh, still in there for the Tigers. Right. As one of the D-backs. Here's Taylor, back to throw. He has time across the middle. Pass is caught, complete, and into the end zone. Touchdown for the Hillcrest Hornets. And that is Bill Anderson that goes into the end zone from the 20. So a 20-yard touchdown strike. That was from Taylor to Anderson. With 7.06 left to go here in the game, and the running clock is now over. No, it's 35 still. Oh, it is 30. Yeah, you're right. It is 35. Now, if he makes this, it's over. And the extra point attempt by the kicker. That is Zeo Shadow. He boots it up through the upright, and yep. it is good. So it's 47 to 12, make it 47-13. Waynesville Tigers still on top, but now the mercy clock stops. Right. Unless the Tigers can do something else with 7.06 left to go. They will get the ball when we come back. They're serving up breakfast, lunch, and dinner at JCK's Down Home Cooking. They're new in the former Jitters location next to the Mary's County Bank in St. Robert. From early bird specials at $3.99 to other breakfast specials, including a kid's menu, to lunch favorites that start at 10.30 in the morning, featuring burgers, patty melts, salad selections, and more. Then there's the dinner entrees with steak, chicken fried steak, pork chops, chicken, and more. Enjoy their daily specials, too, like chicken and dumplings on Sunday for only $3.99. Find JCK's Down Home Cooking on Facebook, then head for the front door. It's open Tuesdays through Sundays at 6 in the morning, closed on Mondays. On the Mother Road, Historic Route 66, St. Robert, next to the Mary's County Bank. Remember Granny's house on a Sunday afternoon? It's back with JCK's Down Home Cooking. What is it, boy? Your house is on fire? Oh, you mean your AC is out? And your owners won't call air serve? So why don't you call? Oh, right. I'm the only one who understands dogs. Too hot in your home for you and the dog? Call AirServe today at 855-259-2280 and start breathing easy tomorrow. That's 855-259-2280. AirServe heating and air in Waynesville, just a phone call away. Well, Evander Bradford is one of the deep backs for the Waynesville Tigers, and I think that's Eric Richardson on the other side getting ready to get this from Shadow, and he kicks a shallow one, and it will be fielded at the 30-yard line by the Tigers, and again, Waynesville will not call for a fair catch. They're going to grab that ball, and they're going to lunge forward, and making the play that time was Isaac Peterson for Waynesville. He... Actually got some positive yardage. Yeah. Boy, that, that is just really dangerous. Oh, yeah. That makes you, as a coach, just, you know, you, you swallow your tongue on that one because that's so dangerous. So dangerous. But he one-hopped it. And, again, uh, actually he didn't one-hop it. Uh, well, yeah, he did. That thing, yeah. did, that thing did take a hop, and he yeah. caught it, and um, off he went. <laughs> but, <laughs> unfortunately, only a couple of yards. First and ten for the Tigers. L.J. Bean, again, quarterback on the Tiger team right now with a 47-13 lead, and here is a keeper from Bean after the fake to Richardson. Bean goes to the outside, breaks one tackle, breaks another, and he is still going sideways. He is going to pick up five yards on the play, but there's a penalty uh, flag behind the line of scrimmage, and that could very well mean a hold for the Waynesville Tigers. That is the indication from Hillcrest that they are going to be backing up Waynesville. Motion penalty on the Tigers, so illegal motion. It's only a five-yarder, but it still will back the Tigers up, and that's 95 yards in penalties against Hillcrest. Uh, yep. I can't but, wait. I can't wait till the Glendale game. Oh my! <laughs> 
Oh, every time we play Glendale, there are, there's a plethora of penalties. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's more penalties than there are uh, geese in a flock going north for the winter or <laughs> south for the winter or whatever. That's right. So 6.39 left to go here in the fourth. 47-13. Tigers on top. Richardson with a handoff to the outside. He tries to cut it back inside. He's going to carry a few Hillcrest Hornets with him, and he will pick up the five and another five, and that will be actually, it looks like maybe an 11-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up a second and four. Yeah, good rub by uh, Mr. Richardson. Whoop, I got it on the wrong one there. Bradford coming back into the game will give Eric a little bit of a break. And again, working out of the pistol formation here is the quarterback. And he will hand off to Evander Bradford to the outside. I'll tell Bradford you just sticks his head down and knocks people over. Still got the ball. And they are going to stop his forward progress at the 34-yard, let make it the 36-yard line of the Hillcrest Hornets before they knock him out of bounds. That's another first down for the Waynesville Tigers. And I thought, sure, they were going to start throwing penalty flags again. I did too, but they didn't. So that's a good thing. He had a 20-yard gain on that one. That's a good run. So Bradford will go take a break, and Richardson coming back in for the Waynesville Tigers. It's good for these young backs to be getting this exposure like this. L.J. Bean, again, works out of the pistol. He'll hand off to Richardson. Richardson will go off left tackle, then cut to the outside, finds a seam, and gets He's down to the 25-yard line. He? He's getting closer every time to finding it, isn't he? That's another first down. Yes, he is. He, I mean, he found the seam. Yep. Uh, but it it closed up in the secondary rather quickly. Well, it just makes you appreciate Sheen just a little bit more, you know, of how explosive and big he really is. You know, because Eric's not slow by any means as a sophomore. But he's almost going to get that explosive stuff just like he did before. Now what are we doing? Another water break. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with more. University offers associate and bachelor degree programs at their Fort Wood Campus Center. Additional degree programs are available entirely online. Courses can be completed in eight-week sessions rather than the traditional 16-week semester. Sessions start five times a year, giving you multiple entry points. Park also offers additional graduate and certificate programs online. Military and civilians are welcome. Application fees are waived for military personnel. Park accepts VA benefits, tuition assistance, financial aid, and payment plans are available. Park University, a regionally accredited nonprofit university. Save time, save money, accelerate your education. 329-2798 or go online, park.edu slash go Leonard Wood. Between your first job and your second. When your old intern becomes your new boss. On the fifth anniversary of your last promotion. That's the moment you need Columbia College. Back here, Marv Luton, Shane McPherson, handoff. There this goes. one goes to Richardson. He cuts to the outside, and he's got some room. He's going. He's going into the end zone, dives for the pylon. He got it. it. Good yes, deal. He did. Excellent deal Eric for Eric. Eric Richardson from the 25-yard line. A touchdown for the Waynesville Tigers. Marv, no flags. Oh, my goodness. How about that, huh? <laughs> so with 5.15 left to go here in the fourth, the Waynesville Tigers will start the mercy clock again. And another $25. Boy, making the money tonight. You bet. To the athletic department from Seller Sexton for 25 bucks for each touchdown. Here's the snap. This one up, and it is no good this no time. No good to the left. All right. This. So an extra point, no good for Choi. That's 53 13. So the Waynesville Tigers have up the point spread again to 40. We got a flag. Forget it. We got oh, they rough the kicker. Rough the kicker. So we'll do this again. Or will we just move the ball closer to the end zone and try for two? I'm going to guess we're going to kick it. Because wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that Aaron's been just maybe a tad off on his timing tonight? Yeah, a little bit. Did we decline? Okay, or, or are we going for two, like you said? I think we're going to go for two because the Waynesville Tigers have went back over to the sideline to talk to the coach, and now the 
Play clock is cranking to 25, and the Waynesville Tigers are still over there. Now they'll come back on the field. They're going to have to hurry. If they're going to go, if they're going to go for two, and they are. Quick snap. It's going to have to be Bean gets set. Hey, get it off in time. Bean throws into the end zone, and it is over the hands of the intended receiver. Again, uh, that was a little bit too well, too high. And I believe uh, on the uh, catch that time, I could not pick up a number. If that was 17, it was Keyshawn Smith. Could be, because he was a tall kid, and Keyshawn 6'3". Right. So he went, he went out for the outside, and the extra point still turns out to be no good. Want some? Sure. Whip him on us. All right. Um, no real updates yet. Um, like I told you on that one, West Plains 33, Kickapoo 13 in the fourth quarter. Lebanon 40, Glendale 14. Not that we're surprised by those scores. Uh, Rolla over Parkview 27 to 6. And those are the ones I'll stay with right now because we're still in a ball game here. $200 from Seller Sexton to the Wayne's Athletic Department. That's the biggest chunk of change that Seller Sexton's had to uh, donate in one game in a long time. And the Waynesville Tigers are putting a whooping on the Hillcrest Hornets here. Well, at least since last year, well, since, I got, since I, the uh, Central game. Yeah, I got to say, you know, this, this is sending a message. We're putting 53 points up against these guys. And it did have eye on the Ozone that, you know, uh, Sheen had 240 in the first half. So that's got to be impressive. You know, we're, we're making a statement like what we wanted to do tonight. We're definitely made that. Chase Evans in to kick the ball away for the Waynesville Tigers. He is their JV kicker. He pooches this thing up in the air, and it is hauled in at the 42-yard line by Dalton McIntyre for the Hillcrest Hornets. And McIntyre will now put the ball in play as the clock ticks away. Okay. So... Hillcrest, of course, brings out their first offense. We've got in most of the guys to be playing Monday against this team here on Monday. Only they'll be, and they may be playing some of these same players no, on actually, Monday. No, actually, our JV will be playing at home Monday. They will be, okay. And here's a pass down the sideline. Caught a one-handed grab that time, and that's the, that is number 32. What a great catch that time by Tyrell Hurd, again, coming out of the backfield, and he that was a perfect pass yeah, by Taylor, Alex Taylor, and he floated one, and Hurd makes a one-handed catch, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. type play, and hauled it in for the first down and all the way down into the Waynesville Tiger, 30 inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Taylor back to throw again. This one overthrows his intended receiver. A diving attempt made by Bill Anderson. Anderson has a 20-yard touchdown catch already in this contest. Taylor throws a good ball. He really does. He does. For a guy that hasn't played quarterback, I don't think, very much this year, I'm guessing, because from what we understand and what we were prepped for is this Mike Floyd, the sophomore, is going to be yeah, their super well, stud. But. Yeah. Well, they've got him down as a wide receiver, and he's a pretty big lad for a yes, wide he receiver. Yes, he is. He's a big boy. And Taylor back to throw. He cranks this one, throws it out to the uh -oh. outside, almost uh -oh. a pick six by the Tigers. And making the play on that and dancing around was Nick Cooper. And Nick is thinking, oh, man. Yeah, he had a shot there, at there it. was nobody. <laughs> oh, I mean, nobody anywhere near him. He picks this thing off, and he scampers 80 yards down the field the other way. He'll hear about that one in films from all his buddies. Oh, yeah, on that uh, one. yeah. his buddies will not let him live that no, one down. No, no. There's your chance. So second and 10. Again, the ball at the 27-yard line. Hurd goes in motion, fake the handoff, and here's a dump down into the corner, and he overthrows this time Bill Anderson. Anderson That's pretty good coverage. Yeah, it was good coverage that time. Is that 89? Trying, uh, to, trying to find a pick out a number here. For the Waynesville Tigers, we do not have an 89. We do not have an 89. But that's, yeah, that is the number. But 89 had good coverage. Yeah. Again, these are a lot of JV players in the game right now for the Waynesville Tigers with a 53-13 lead over the Hillcrest Hornets. 
So Coach Joe Haynes uh, brought enough players so they could get a little bit of varsity experience on a Friday night. Taylor back to throw. Here come the Tigers, and he is hit as he throws the ball, and he got he still got the pass away and barely overthrew Bill Anderson again, going on a post pattern, and headed to the goal post, and that thing again, just a little overthrowing, but that's going to be a turnover on downs, and the Waynesville Tigers will get the ball back on the fourth and ten with 146 left to go here in this game as time is ticking away. Can we take a knee? Almost. Not quite, can we? Well, first and ten, yeah, we will be able to take a knee. I'm not sure the yep, uh, coach. Yep, we can now. I don't think the coach wants the uh, JV team, however, to take a knee. Of course, you've got Bradford back there. you got LJ Bean back there. I'm not real sure you want to get anybody hurt. We're not going to take a knee. We're working out of the pistol formation. Hand off to Bradford. He goes off right tackle, and he is going to be driven backwards. Okay. So the Tigers, eight touchdowns here in this contest. Very, very nice. Shane Butler Lawson has been the big victory. one. He just gave victory formation. So with 49 seconds left, looks like the Tigers will come down and take a knee. As LJ Bean will go back under center. And this football game will come to an end as soon as the... Uh, Tigers get ready to get that thing under the uh, 42nd mark, which it is. L.J. Bean takes a knee, and this one is going to come to an end, 53-13. The Waynesville Tigers are going to win this over the Hillcrest Hornets, and that will set the stage for the Waynesville Tigers to come back home against the, uh, Hill, or, uh, the Central Bulldogs next Friday night. We'll come back and bring you some stats and bring you some other stuff in a moment. Between your first job and your second. When your old intern becomes your new boss. On the fifth anniversary of your last promotion. That's the moment you need Columbia College. Where you can earn a degree for about half the cost of many schools. Register today at Columbia College in the Townville Plaza in Waynesville or at Truman Education Center on Fort Leonard Wood. The first class is free for our military spouses. Learn more at ccis.edu. Mailbox It of St. Robert is the go-to resource for packing, shipping, printing, and business service needs. Their team of dedicated, professionally trained experts understands the meaning of superstar customer care. They focus on saving you time and money by ensuring you get the right products and services at the right price. They can pack and ship almost anything to almost anywhere in the world. But shipping is only one way they can help make your life easier. They are also St. Robert's premier copy, print, and document service center. Large or small, black and white or color. It can be printed. Mailbox It can handle. It. Mailbox it. One stop shop for dozens of business products and services that will allow you to do what you're good at while they take care of the other stuff you need to succeed. Dr. Shane and Tabitha Ogle are chiropractors serving Waynesville and the surrounding areas. They and the rest of the team at Ogle Chiropractic are committed to providing chiropractic solutions to address your unique needs. Whether you're experiencing back pain, neck pain, headaches, or even muscular tightness and tension, you may be searching for pain relief after an accident, experiencing an injury, or if you suffer from a specific condition like chronic back pain or a spinal condition. Even if you're looking to improve your overall health, health, Ogle Chiropractic can help you attain your everyday wellness goals. To schedule an appointment, call 573-774-4177. That's 774-4177. Attention, are you looking for a great place to work with new salaries and new bonuses and to be appreciated for compassionate care? Piney Ridge Behavioral, a treatment health center for adolescents, is hiring people with passion. Openings for youth care workers, RNs, LPNs, and licensed therapists with new sign-on bonuses. Applicants must be 21 and have a high school diploma or equivalent education. Contact Abby at 573-774-4034 034 for more information. Walk-in applications are accepted or apply online at indeed.com. At St. Robert Family Dental, doctors Jesse Smith, Bryce Brown, and Paul Riddle do all phases of family dentistry. They work hard to make your visit enjoyable and they deliver excellent dental care to you and your family. 
They have 24-hour emergency contact and accept TRICARE and most other dental insurance. St. Robert Family Dental Center, located at 441 Marshall Drive in St. Robert, next to Arby's. Call 336-5599 for St. Robert Family Dental. You're listening to KOZQ 102.3 FM, Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Get Napa know-how at St. Robert Auto Supply off Missouri Avenue in St. Robert and get the good stuff. We're back, Marv Luton, along with Shane McPherson. The Waynesville Tigers rack up eight touchdowns, four by Shane Butler Lawson, two by Eric Richardson, one of those on a fumble recovery. A jet sweep from A.J. Martin and an 18-yard pass from quarterback L.J. Bean to Marianne Fiamme, and the Tigers roll over Hillcrest Hornets 53-13. to Tigers racking up 13 first downs in this contest, but way too many yards in penalties, 95 yards in penalties, but the Tigers cashing in on all three turnovers by the Hillcrest Hornets, while the Waynesville Tigers did have one fumble in this contest. But all in all, pretty good showing by this Tiger team, Shane. Oh, yeah. Well, this was one of our best, well, by far our best total of the year. I mean, we ran the ball 32 times tonight for 454 yards. That's a heck of an average. Uh, we passed the ball three for seven for 28. So what Coach Haynes told us before the game, he really held true to big time. On the other hand, you know, uh, Hillcrest ran the ball 33 times for 115 yards. Most of their passes came in the second half. They were they were nine for 18 for 118 yards for a total of 268. So you know we pretty much doubled their output, and it showed on the field. It showed in the score, and we've got to let this momentum take us in to not take Central lightly next week to get better at what we're doing or get our penalties down, get the run game just even a little more sharp and polished, get you know everything going really well, and then you know after that, after that you know we're we're going to see. Rolla, and that's going to be a big matchup for us. And, and I think the boys are really now looking forward to it more than ever. Let's hope so. Again, a 53-13 win for the Waynesville Tigers here tonight over the Hillcrest Hornets. Back at home next week against the Central Bulldogs. For our engineer back at the station, Coach Jim Brown, I'm Marv Luton, along with my partner, Shane McPherson. Have yourself a great evening. See you back here next week on 102.3 for more Tiger football. You've been listening to Waynesville Tiger Football for 2019. Our game has been brought to you in part by Buckhorn Flooring, Balfour Beatty Communities, Lindsey Chrysler Dodge, Mailboxit, Ogle Chiropractic, Park University, the Piney Ridge Center, St. Robert Family Dental, Willard Asphalt, Pulaski County Home Health Agency, Earhart Properties, Sacalaris Ford, along with AirServe Heating and Air, Andy's Pizza, Lowe's Chevrolet, and the Waynesville St. Robert Airport. That's it for this time. We'll see you next time with more Tiger Football.